uh, good evening, Nottingham. Uh, we are having a uh, workshop today in regards to uh, going over policies and procedures of the Nottingham Recycling Center. I'd like to call this meeting to order, starting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So, some of this is uh, probably uh, long overdue. Um, where, where would the board like to start first? I mean, I see something here about the uh, estimate for a bailer. Uh, do we want to discuss that first or just go right into uh, the operating plans and other areas that we think we might need to tackle? I don't suspect we're going to get everything done tonight. This could be a multi-day uh, um, meeting, if you will, unless was, everybody feels comfortable with how things are now. Was Wayne coming in tonight? Um, he checked in this morning and I told him we were still on for seven, so I assume yes. Because it'd be nice to have him here to yep. talk about the baler yep. yep. and why he thinks the plastic baler versus the can balers. I mean, I probably tend to agree with him, but I'd like to hear his. Absolutely. No, I agree. I agree. I think his input would be valid. Because with the can baler, they just basically make a big cube. Right. Mm -hmm. And then what would they would do with that cube? Just bring that go again, into the trailer or? Right. We'd have to trail. Well, probably not that trailer. Right. So it's getting. We'd have to store it until we had enough to haul. And then we'd haul it all in a big truck. Okay. Versus the plastic, what were we going to bail with the plastic? Plastic. All plastics, one, two? He, um, it, it has to be separated, so he was looking at it being an, another way to sort it. Okay. Bail it, store it. Mm hmm. But in that instance, it would have to be a different baler because the smaller one wouldn't work. Okay. I guess the one that um, Sean had proposed for the aluminum cans is a much smaller bale. <clears throat> is that this one? Yes. Okay. And uh, Steve, you're saying that uh, Wayne may be more interested in doing a plastic bale instead of a can one? I thought that's what I heard somebody here say. I, I, I think I'm going to agree with you. John, you had mentioned something about budget. Well, it's just every year the dumps cost in the town more and more money to run. <clears throat> you know, and you kind of, I, again, not a popular uh, statement that I will make right now. But, you know, you kind of look at a small fee would be, I think, acceptable for the people that use the dump. You know, with exceptions of maybe if you're, you know, over 65, you don't have to pay the fee because you're retired or something like that, you know, give a give a benefit to the the fixed income, you know, but the fact of the, the cost of the dump rising, it's, and I use the thing, you know, if your kids were going to the rec department or the summer program, you're paying $200 a month for your kid to use the summer rec program, you know, not, I mean, we as a town pay into the rec program for a lot of stuff, but you know, for the people that are using it specifically, they do have to pay an extra fee for it. Now, I know my tax dollars, even I may be somebody that just goes once or twice. You know, I mean, maybe at the most, I go to the dump five times, six times a year, you know? But I know that, you know, the guy that goes every single week and that goes there, you know, should the service, shouldn't there be a different fee for somebody that uses it regularly? I mean, I'd pay my 50, it doesn't matter, or whatever it is, but you know, when you sat on the budget committee last year, and this is why I bring it up, you know, you heard members of the budget committee stressing that, you know, why are we in the town paying for services that they weren't using or members weren't using? And that was one of the big things of like, oh, well, shouldn't they have a GoFundMe page for, you know, there was a bunch of stupid stuff that was said, but the fact is, you know, shouldn't the, 
I mean, in most towns, there's a, it's a fee to get rid of your trash. We're one of the very few that doesn't pay, that people don't pay anything. You know, I mean, obviously we charge for some of the stuff here, like big items, like if you're getting rid of a TV or something, but your general... So that like Northwood, Barrington, Lee, their transfer stations, they charge a fee every year? You have to I haven't looked them all up, but I'm, okay. saying, I'm just using in general, if you look around, I know the town of Amherst charges, the town of Nashville charges, I mean... The, yeah, but that's trash pickup. <coughs> and it's curbside pickup, right? Yeah. For some, right. But again, they're paying a lot more than what that... So right. Some towns actually have to pay for their own bags, too, with the right. label on it. <coughs> yeah, but same thing. It's curbside pickup, too. But again, you're still right. No, they, use, they bring it to the recycling. Okay. The, the dumps. Okay. Um, well, we'll get there one second for that. We're just, the general conversation is that, I, you know, we used to charge a dollar, then it went to nothing. And the dollar was basically just to cover the cost of the sticker, which it didn't even cover the cost of the sticker, because it cost more than that uh, for the sticker, for Lori touching the sticker, for, you know, for everything, it, the dollar doesn't even cover. And then you're thinking as everything keeps going up, in order for people in town that want to keep our taxes low, we do have to find a way to supplement some of these extra costs. Now, I'm not asking somebody to make an, a, you know, a, a fee or something to be extraordinary where it's affecting somebody's budget and they won't go to. I mean, even if it was $25, I'd like to see 50, but if it was $25, it's 50 cents a week to throw your trash away. I mean, how can that be considered uh, absurd, you know, into the cost of it? You know, and again, that, when these but the, the other argument is that folks will say that that's what they pay their taxes for sure but when their taxes go up because the fee goes up i mean the way the the budget you know when we start looking at things are going to get cut out of the budget in order to keep it low and we don't have the money coming in to support what we're we're offering the town so we're going to be at a conundrum there of where we go on how do we pay for things and I'm just using the, and again, I just don't think that it's wrong to have a small fee for once a year for people to use the facility. It'll also help us keep up the facility. The facility's falling apart. There's insulation problems that are in there that need to be done. I mean, the facility hasn't been touched, I don't think, in 20 years. You know, and there's a lot of things in that facility that could be upgraded that need to be upgraded just for the working environment of the people that are working in there. You know, to make it a nicer, I mean, we're not trying to make it, you know, the Taj Mahal, but at least it'd be a, you know, I mean, it's just a sense of where you work, you know, stuff that could be redone, you know, or upgraded, which we don't have the money to upgrade it. And then with the feet, with everything getting up to more expensive, I just think it's long forgotten the year 2023 that, you know, a small fee to get rid of where, in my opinion, it's, it's something that I think is valid to look at. You know whether the board agrees and whether we put it to you know it's so should we look at other fees too so i mean the the, the disposal fee was like we got fees for just about everything should that be looked at too so that was one of my questions when i had emailed today is just wondering so if we're charging 15 dollars to get rid of a tire what does it cost us to get rid of that tire are we you know is it costing the town more money to get rid of this stuff because the, those a la carte costs aren't well, you can look at the, the tire fee, right? The five dollars for the person yeah. that changed their own, right? It's five dollars a passenger tire, so twenty bucks. Give her four tires. Yeah. Go to the dealership or go to the place and ask you what their disposal fee is. It's probably more than that. But, well, that's what I'm saying. What does it cost? When you us? go to go to a place that changes your tire and take it, they have a fee for you to get rid of those tires. Yeah. These fees that are located here are stuff that this isn't a weekly thing that people are doing. No one's every week is going tossing in four tires, or and if they are, then. Obviously, it's probably a local business, which we state in our, our things here that we're not allowing that to happen. We're not a commercial dumping site. <coughs> but and you look at some here, it's great. We have a household appliance fees for washers, dryers, stoves, heaters, freezers at $15. How many refrigerators you throwing away a year? I don't think I've ever thrown away in 20 years. I don't think I've ever thrown away any of item on here. You know, so I mean, this is where I kind of see where you look at these fees here these aren't these are just to basically cover the cost of these expenses that we have to pay away but that's my question it's not your general every but does day it cover the cost to get rid of this it stuff? probably doesn't no what's that is there a cost to get rid of them no i know there is but it most likely doesn't even cover the cost <coughs> you add it all up. and again i'm not looking for the dump to become a profitable 
entity for the town. I'm just looking at a way for the for us to compensate the rising costs of trash because it's I mean it, it, every year it's getting more and more and more expensive and if we want to keep our four percent tax budget you know then there's people are gonna have to start paying for services and you know if you use the service well you should be paying a little for the service for the person that has trash busters or waste management or has one of these I mean we're putting the burden of the dump on them when they're not even using it is that fair maybe maybe not but you know some people would say it's not that why is their tax dollars being put to something they're not using we're required to have well again but it's not where we can also have a fee for it too I just don't see us in a situation where if we hike these up too much well I don't get I wouldn't even we're gonna be running into a situation where people are gonna be going down some of these dirt roads here and dumping their stuff because you, oh, hear, that you hear it across the, 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 the uh, surrounding communities that people, to avoid these fees, they'll dump it some, anywhere. These, yeah. These big ones. Oh, yeah, you see them, on, well, you see them everywhere. Yeah. People will put anything out. They'll put a, anything out saying, hey, slightly, you know, just so they don't have to. That's going to happen eventually. It's happening now. At no, the I mean cost legal now. dumping. Well, again, that's, I, I think you're, if the people in Nottingham, have respect for their town yep. and do it you're gonna have a bad apple everywhere if everybody was perfect we wouldn't need a police department either in town but obviously that's not the case it's the same thing you have to expect that some people are gonna break the rules in this because it just it's the nature of having 6,000 people in town not everyone's gonna be perfect so if, you, if that was the deciding factor if somebody say well if we raise the fees that we might have a couple people throwing trash I mean if I see trash on my road, I pick it up. Even if it's a Budweiser can or if it's a plastic bag or something like this. You know, I mean, you hope that people won't take their whole household things and throw it in the woods. I mean, that's pretty disrespectful. And I hope people in town have better moral values than that. I mean. You'd see it posted every now and then. People were right. dumping. Sure, but that's happening now without. So what's, I mean. It seems like it has been better for the last couple of years, and I don't know why if it's just been I think the advent people have been getting called out or we've been able to figure it out pretty quickly like some people find okay. the trash and it takes about one or two snaps it's on the town page and somebody's like I didn't notice who that is and it kind of gets PM'd around and yeah or they're dumb enough to leave a freaking bill in there that says their name on it yeah okay. so in my mind I think we can definitely I guess talk about the fees but I think just figuring out the processes number one and then number two what it's currently costing us well yeah. The budget for the, the dump, I uh, looked up in the 22 town report, you know, for sanitation and that was $300,000. Mm -hmm. All right, I mean, our police department's uh, was 600,000. It, it was half the cost to run the dump as it was. And then I what's mean, the revenue coming in from the re It's not that much. No, 2022, I the revenue was $73,438 and the total expenditures were Three hundred and twenty-three thousand two hundred and thirty-one dollars. That doesn't even cover the overhead, the overhead costs. No, and again, that's. I'm, but you're thinking if you took, you know, you know, my bad math right here. But you know, if it was fifty dollars for easy math, you know, times two thousand people, I mean, what is that? A hundred grand? That that comes in. That's a third of the cost of the running the dump. Have we ever looked into privatizing? Again, I don't know if people want to get rid of the, the nostalgic period of Nottingham recycling. We have the oldest recycling center, da 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 da. You hear that all the time. Keep it the way it is. And again, I'm not, I'm not against having it the way we keep doing it. I'm just thinking that, you know, I mean, well, look what we had to do last year on the budget. We had to move a hundred grand out of our budget and throw it to a warrant article for the highway department hoping that it would pass in order for us to get to the four four percent we're going to be in the same thing now in the next year after that we so did. if we don't find something that to, in order to bring revenue in the services we offer for the town are going to start to suffer that's how i look at it we do tie that 
the current sticker. It's also like the beach access and a few other. I think there's just the two facilities, right? The recycling center and the, the town beach. We try. I don't even know if we really enforce the beach portion of it. Occasionally. So, occasionally. But. You know, and that's because, you know, I mean, some residents call, but it's not like we have a daily patrol from the police that are going down there asking if people to see their IDs. Enough. Yeah. Saying, hey, are you a resident or not? I mean, it's kind of one of those courtesy things. It's the reason why you get your dump sticker and we say, hey, you can use the beach at the same time because, you know, at least we know when somebody goes, they have a sticker and it says, okay, you are a resident because you, you got the sticker. Yeah. You know, you don't see, but if you come with a Massachusetts plate and you don't have a sticker, you might think, well, maybe you aren't a resident of the town. Except for that. Somebody would probably call. Transitional people in like Pawtuckaway and sure. stuff like that. Absolutely. Why would you go to the town beach if you were on the lake? <laughs> but well, maybe you're there visiting friends. Who knows for the reason, right? I mean, you could be there for a picnic with friends or something like that from in town, and that you know that you know. Or, but I'm just looking at it more for a financial way in order to keep our town operating at the low cost. You know, as people don't want to admit, but you know, at the eighteen dollars and thirteen cents or whatever we were per thousand. You know, last year as a tax rate was pretty remarkable compared to most towns around here. And if we want to keep that, you know, it comes with bringing in revenue in order to still provide services. And you know, and if we don't do anything different, well, things are going to stop. <coughs> That's a little of my food for thought for my. This is effective April 1st, 2022 on the recycling fee, but was anything actually updated in that time for? Not for, uh, so my understanding, Kelly and I went over that. Um, there were no fees that were updated. It was just information about the recycling and where it goes. Uh, was yeah. that last year? Yes. Uh, April 1st last year, we updated the fees. You did update the fees, okay. But, yes, we had That's a meeting. That's what this is. We had a select board meeting about, up, we did upgrade. Can you come up to the table? We had a select board meeting where we did actually go over the fees and we did change the fees slightly in order to uh, reflect what we thought some of the cost was without doing anything drastic. Um, so there was slightly increases on it, but nothing to, nothing that was changing the, you know, the, the income basis. No, yeah. It was more still trying to keep it, you know, part of what it was maybe costing us or slightly costing us do we have a better breakdown at all anywhere like what we're bringing in or what it's costing us we probably don't have that type of data for anything it's kind of tough too but I mean because the stuff just comes in and they're usually already busy so to have them stop and be like today I took in 20 tires today and you know mark I think it kind of gets marked down that they took money in but I don't to then be like, all right, and then our tires going out, we could see. But it's really the cost of the dump, which is our major, probably, our major thing is going to be our bulky waste bins that we're getting rid of that sit over there, and then the compactor, all the crap that goes in there. Yep. I mean, that's a, those are our two largest expenses, which there is no, we don't charge you to throw anything in bulky waste. Yes, we do. Oh, well. Bulky waste, yeah, should cover all these mattresses and rugs. Truck and loads, uh, trailer loads. And we do get a breakdown from NRRA every year, and it's reported in the town report. It tells you, you know, aluminum cans, plastics, glass, scrap metal, paper, steel cans, and tires that what we recycled for us. What we get for money back? Or um, no, actually, for the recycled amounts, how many pounds? <clears throat> So you could have a whole big trash bag full of old plastic toys mm -hmm. that we don't charge for, and you can just go dump them in bulky waste. Just one bag. Right. Just one, but again, that's one I've bag. I've seen them throw down the chute, too. Again, but we don't charge anything for that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's still coming to the cost of the bulky waste. Yeah. Even though the money we are collecting that goes in there, it doesn't cover the cost of the whole big thing. So it costs us the same for bulky waste as it does for the compactor? Tipping fees is at the same price? I don't know. One's waste management and one's NRR. Uh, stuff that goes into the compact that we actually get money for. 
Uh, not not the trash, but right. the recycling. Right, the trash. Uh, Versus now, bulky waste. Now, we have a problem with the trash. A while back, we had the uh, clear bags. Mm -hmm. That was the rule. Then that got changed. I mean, I had a lot of people, they were go going along with the program. It got changed. Now, everything's going into there. Glass, metal. So we're losing money there. We're also filling up the landfills. You know, if we could see what's going in there, make sure things go where they're supposed to go. What actually do we receive money for? Uh, anything going into the dumpsters, appliances, electronics. We get paid for that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. If you got Wait. like a truckload, it's a truckload of bulky waste, wood, or demolition, it's $25. Okay, but see, so I'm going to go to you, ask you this question right here, Wayne. I'm gonna, just because, and again, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but I'm putting you on the spot. I mean, okay, couches, love seats, recliners, chairs, and et cetera, we charge $20 for. Yes. How many come in on a Saturday? A lot. Really? Uh, we probably had, um, probably had about eight or ten mattresses this week, uh, at least half a dozen couches. Um, yeah, we have a lot of things come in. Which is why they then smash them down because a couch is a lot of right. dead air, so well, to make it all it, fit. To get all rid of all that stuff right there, which takes up a lot of space in that big retirement, it was only two hundred fifty dollars or two hundred eighty dollars. What does it cost to uh, let's do that? Two hundred is that the one that's two fifteen? I am not sure what what it costs to empty them. Uh, yeah, from. This is from 2019. The fee was $215 per haul and then $76 a ton. It's got to be more than that now. Well, it says it goes up 3% a year. Yeah. Beginning January Even with this year, with the inflation, I'll ask you, I'm sure it's gone up quite a bit more than that. And you get the people who sneak things in. So is that the same for the bulky waste and the trash? Hauling fee would probably be the same. Tipping fee? Trash might be different where it's going to a landfill as opposed to being processed. Is it waste is it waste management that picks both up? Uh, waste management picks up the uh, regular household trash, Casella hauls all the other dumpsters. Okay. I don't think I provided oh. you the just trying to get a feel for what the price difference is and is it worth having bulky waste or would it be uh, well, just throw it all together. I know Casella tells me at my work, we got a cardboard dumpster and a trash dumpster, uh -huh. and we we use it accordingly, but they're saying it really doesn't matter because we're going to bring it back and we're going to... Uh, I know uh, what happens. We're going to sort it all. When it it goes out. down to Erco for a processing last I knew. I worked there. Yeah. You know, gets, they take out all the wood, get, you know, separate the metal, anything that doesn't, you can't sure. burn or chip up. So uh, I don't know what they, I mean, they re, they recycle whatever they get from metal and whatnot in there. When's the last time we've done a uh, assessment of haul fees, Betty? In a few years, I Well, your contract with waste management is to for an it actually expires at the end of this year okay so that would actually be a good time to kind of put it out to bid see what we get for and it may be cheaper but waste management is usually the cheapest yes the contract expires december 31st of 2023 it was a five-year contract Things have changed a lot in five years. It's probably going to be, yeah, wishing for that. Okay, kind of change gears here a little bit, uh, Wayne. Um, right there, the, the baler. Yep. Uh, can or plastic? Plastic. Well, what reason behind that right now? What we're doing our number twos. We have to separate those clear and color. Mm -hmm. Well. When you do that, you've got like 100 bags sitting upstairs, just moldering away, dripping down through the floors. That's a $1,000 fine through the state if they catch that. So I've been doing mixed bales lately. So that new baler is going to, I think, should go toward plastic. We don't generally get a full 
you know, we don't fill that aluminum can dumpster completely. So it's easy enough to bring that up there every Monday morning and empty it. But we do lose money by having mixed bales. I don't know how much. It was a while ago I but talked to them. Does the does the, the revenue from the plastic um, outweigh the cost of the baler? Uh, I don't know the numbers on that. Okay. But I mean, if we keep mixing them, we're going to be losing losing money on the recycling the end of that. As I said, the aluminum cans, they'd be fine the way that they are, just in the cage. But we need you, that trailer's not. That trailer could be fixed up. Okay. Uh, Brian Allen, he's completely capable of doing that. Wouldn't take a whole lot to get that thing set the way it's supposed to be. And you said you fill that once a week? Yep. Will you completely fill it in a week, or could you do it every two weeks? Couldn't do it every two weeks. Fine. No. Can you crush it? No, it's, you do that, you're going to be wrecking the trailer. Right. We had more rugged, like a uh, dump trail, like they had for contracting with mm -hmm. sides on it. We could, but. So when you were crushing. Well, what do you gain? <laughs> Another week? Yeah, maybe. But when you were crushing the cans, you'd crush them and then put them inside that trailer anyway. Partially. Uh, people would also dump their cans in the trailer, uncrushed. Yeah. So, I mean, we never overfilled that thing since I've been there. So, not worried about that. I think starting around COVID, they made it more outside. Yeah. Before that, it used to be pretty much all compacted and then brought out to it. But Cause I think it tra that trailer was out back. Yes. It wasn't out front. Yeah. I don't know if there's some way it, it's hard to try to like incentivize people to bring us the things that we can sell for profit but then maybe to your point have like a two if you're going to be using the other dumpsters but even metal we get money for mm. you know and some people like to try to keep it's just it comes down to convenience right I mean it is very easy to walk out of your garage and put the stuff at the end of your driveway and then it disappears Trash pressures comes along, but it's all mixed, right? And then they do something with it. Um, I mean, I guess recycling comes down to like <coughs> eating organic food, right? Doing the right thing is never cheap or inexpensive, right? Like organic food's gonna cost more, all that stuff. So if we want to do what we believe is the steward thing to do overall for the environment, which is maintaining recycling, we have to try to make it a little bit easy, but I get your point too. Knocking a hundred thousand dollars off that bill definitely brings it in. It's and I can tell you, because I use Trash Busters, it ain't fifty dollars a year. Yeah, it's not even close. <laughs> That's about that a week. <laughs> Probably not quite. Well, I do have an idea for maybe making a little bit of revenue there. People complain about the clear bags. They can't get good ones. If we were to sell good ones, you know, 30 gallon ones, might be able to make a little bit off of that, then people would have no excuse not to use those, you know, follow the rules. Like, I mean, when I lived in Newmarket, you had to put everything into orange bags, but then. But you could put everything in that, right? Everything went yeah, into the orange. We bag. Don't, and I don't think we want to go down that road. And if you make the bags too big, I've seen where people have. I've seen them show up even at ours. They show up with like the 55 gallon clear bag with three other bags in it. Like, it's in a bag. clear bag. Because at the end of the day, if you have a clear bag, like a small household one, but they came home from McDonald's and there's a can in there, like, there's a certain point of policing. We're just wasting time and resources. Like, having four people, having somebody being paid hourly to like man the shoe while we're losing. Because we saved five cans from going down there that day, did we did we pay for that person? Well, that's why I wanted to know what the tipping fee was, so that we could rationally make a decision based on yeah. dollars and cents. It's definitely like a complicated thing because it, it gets into like I've heard that too. Like, hey, let's keep the clear bags, the the super clear ones, would just shred, and then trash was everywhere. And honestly, sometimes stuff happens. There's just stuff 
that makes it into a bag that maybe there's a reason it's in there because you, I don't know there's a mil multitude of reasons why something might be in there that you're just like because this is the best place for this to be and well uh, as an example about a month ago family come in with an eight-foot truck bed all black bags everything went down the chute not a bit of recycling was done so I mean we got to do some policing up there yeah that obviously is but not is beneficial to anybody keeping somebody like you said Matt just by standing by the shoe how if it cost effective we that? don't have to be standing by the shoe we can be just all around but honestly how are you going to keep an eye on that because you got someone throwing stuff on the outside you got people throwing in from the inside I don't mind being outside patrolling and then the other three guys are inside so then who's manning the, the desk if somebody has to pay fees I'm watching the office while I'm moving around outside right and I mean I'm not it's not you say you can do that you go inside to clear a check for two couches or whatever and then somebody walks in and three bags go down the chute real quick hey that guy's not watching or here's a couple of paint cans and throw those right down in there I mean yeah, free for all like that. I understand that too um, I just I'm kind of wondering how other towns everybody does it so different even like Epping Newmarket like it's hard figuring out what to do because it comes down to man hours are just as expensive as everything else in terms of what are we actually going to save for costs are you you know somebody could be using a giant black contractor bag and you go through it and you might find a piece of cardboard maybe they really did a good job they just happen to have giant big contractor bags and they throw it down the chute I've seen insulation go in there I've seen fluorescent lights being tossed in there <coughs> and by Which, the time they're in there too late to get them yeah no it's a safety thing nobody's going fishing for I mean I've seen chairs being you know house uh, kitchen chairs tossed in there Which, I mean I if, if they're not watched why why are they throwing that in there not just throwing it because <laughs> they don't know I know oh well, they know they just don't care but then at the end of the day what does that actually cost us if it goes in there well it just takes uh, up exactly. space I mean, it takes up space. Well, yeah, but we're emptying it every week regardless. But the thing on space, there's been a few occasions I've been up there, we have loaded that thing up, and we can't put no more into it. So then it goes into bulky waste, and that costs even more to get rid of. If we regulate what goes into it, then we can get through the, you know, the week without you know, having to re resort to other dumpsters. Mm -hmm. This is they the compact you're speaking of, right? The compact? Huh? Yes. This is the compact you're speaking yeah, of. Yeah, the big one. But... I know in previous meetings we were talking about possibly adding a second one because the town is growing. Mm. Okay, so at, s at some point we're going to be needing to look at that as well. Yeah. Well. So I don't, I don't, I, I don't think that this, the bag is really the issue as far as whether well, it's clean. When, when I took over up there, every you're in charge up there. Yes. Every Saturday. Right around three, that would start jamming up. We'd be having problems with that. Once I started enforcing the rules, you know, watching what's going in there, we weren't having that problem. We were able to get through the weekend without any problems, without that thing jamming up, having to reset it every other time, or just not being able to use it. got off a little topic here I asked the question in regards to a no this is everything I think we're talking about is is valid to where we need to understand right. but the, the original question was we're talking about bail or yeah oh. bail. yeah I mean yeah, we need one and it should be used with plastic in my opinion and the bailer that we have a quote on is a smaller bail than couldn't use that is one that sufficient plastic? or hmm? the one we have a quote on is that's Sufficient size? It's smaller. Um, trying to find the details on it. Have you seen it, Wayne? It's a 24 no. by 36 no. by 36 bale is what it would produce. Uh, they're between 250 and 460 pounds. The ones we have right now, put, how many pounds are they? Wayne, how big is the bale that? Um, do, 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 give me a second here. The cardboard that goes in is 28 by 52. How many pounds? 
uh, we usually get around a thousand to two out of each. So that's the, the cardboard. Weights, the weight's cut in half, mm -hmm. which makes it a safety horses. And then there's going to be storage because if they're all different size bales, we're going to have to make different arrangements for them. To so are we keeping the old baler yes. as well? Yep. So this was this was an option to because the can crusher broke down and it's now been disposed of. Wayne took care of that. Um, there was no chance of re they could not find parts for it. The guy who came in had never even seen one before. Okay. It was that was a dinosaur. Forty. Yeah, it was forty yes, it plus was. years old. It's been there at least forty years, I would say. All of that. <laughs> Good thing we're conservative. We don't want to spend money on the product, you know. <laughs> so I think that's where the discussion was: is so do the we yeah, replace the trailer? Do we replace the trailer? Do we bail them, which would then eliminate the need to haul them on a regular basis? Because if we bail them, then we can store them in smaller quantities and then do like one plastic. bulk delivery. No, the cans. Oh, can't. Okay, the cans. I just want to make sure I'm following. Yeah. The plastic came in after the fact because Wayne got the storage issue. But and with sorting. the with the cans right now, you saying we can, it's not two weeks. You can't go two weeks, but no, week and a half, probably, right? Uh, every Monday we deliver them up to Harding Metals. Now that we get a so just out of curiosity, how long does it take you to, to bring it up there and empty it? About 45 minutes, all told, depending on how much driving up, emptying, and back. driving back. Uh, depends on if there's a lot of people there. I try and get up there early before they're crowded. So, okay. I mean, last dump truck. So, what, so you'd have to get in there with a shovel and shovel it all out, right? Uh, yeah, we got a rake and a shovel, which seems to work. We had a guy up there before us uh, last week. He's using a leaf blower to empty his cage. So it took a little lot, while longer than it should have. But if you had a dump trail, it'd be literally split time. Pretty much. Which saves time as well. So as Matt, you pointed out, time is money. All right, about 45 minutes. Yeah, You'd have to find out the hour charge for having them go back and forth. And yeah, I mean, but if, with a dump trailer, it is larger than what's up there now. He could go two weeks at that point. So now, and they're paying us for the aluminum. Pardon me. We get paid for the aluminum. Yeah, we're yeah. we're at about 45 cents a pound right now. That's not well, my original idea was uh, if we could get a dump truck up there, we could just get a cage that slides into the back of the dump truck. We fill the cage. Oh, we did have one, but the motor's blown. Yeah. Well, my, that was my idea that we could just... 550 right? The 550, the motor's blown. Yeah. Where are we at with that? That's another topic. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, case in point, could have used it. Yeah, I mean, they have... The uh, department's not using it right now. What my idea was, we could get a cage that would slide in the back of that when we needed it. We could also utilize that truck around there with a snow plow and possibly a sander. Then the town guys don't have to be coming up there and doing the cleanup. Well, that was not the whole purpose of the uh, 2012 being put up there? For the time being temporarily? Yeah. I'm well, hoping if we got a backhoe, they can plow with the <coughs> bucket on the hoe. Well, that's been on hold now, isn't it? No, the backhoe is scheduled to be here in August. It is, okay. Yes. And that has right. a, uh, is it a snow scoop? Whatever. Yeah, ten, a big snow scoop. But you can do it a lot quicker with a truck than you can with a backhoe. Oh, I don't know. I bet you'd be surprised. So, 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 so you can get a lot closer Wayne, Wayne, to everything Wayne, with a plow. Wayne, if I'm understanding you correctly, you're saying you can do it quicker with a truck than you can do with the, with the backhoe. Well, then why are we getting a backhoe for the facility? Uh, the machine, I don't know if Sean decided on that, but that machine we got now is falling apart. The, so needed, the Bobcat? Yeah. Okay. The, the back was going to also, like I was there on Saturday, and they were using that to push down the bulky waste, cram it down, push it down because it was overflowing. How much is this backhoe? But then also the backhoe is going to be, if we get a, a two-foot snowstorm, there's, there's only limited space around that, that thing. So it will have to be picked up and pushed over and, you know, more than what a plow is going to do. But it can also be used by the highway garage. Sure. They're also the second uses the highway department has. Right. Right. Which is basically Monday through Friday, and they would use it on the weekend if needed to crush down. But. So there was a multi-purpose for the use. <laughs> well, we did have a backhoe up there for about a month, and it did uh, really, it worked really well. 
compared to what we got. That machine we got is a materials handle or not. Yeah. Built for what we're using it for. Doesn't have the down pressure. No. So the back hole, you can get in there with a the hole, crush everything down, move it, you know, spread it out. Down pressure. But, yeah, you're just getting into safety things with other people coming around while you're doing that, too. But we're going to have to to make the truck you know what I mean? Now, now they're smashing it, and people are trying to throw stuff in there. Oh, we deal with that with the other machine too. Yeah. Um, I just quickly looked, pulled up the town of Eppings, and they do a twenty dollar per vehicle sticker for the year for the solid waste facility. And then I quickly looked at their fees, which are all over the place i think they are probably better on tires but some of the stuff i think we're better on like household materials mattresses and stuff like that so this could be a good reference point for a similar town help build some costs and i think like well actually you know you have the bigger tires broken down so i'd have to look but we're we might even be better than that <coughs> some other stuff but to going to the they do a per vehicle fee i think it's 20 dollars per vehicle that you want to go to the dump Per permit. Per permit. Which is reason why I only use one of our two vehicles because the other one I just can't cram as much stuff in there. Let's see? <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> so I think our looking here, our fees probably aren't too far off. We just need to like how well, you know how much well we don't know what the we would make for extra money by having an, an additional plastic baler. Having the can baler sounds like it would be an additional burden because we would have to deal with it differently than we're dealing with it now. Mm -hmm. Would you bail all plastics in the plastic baler? Uh, ones and twos is all that we recycle up there. Would you put the one and two together though? We can, but we lose money on the bales. So it would be better to separate it? Yes. But it, if you have this baler, like a plastic baler right now, you throw all ones in there, you crush them and make a bale, yeah. and then you take that out. And you could throw in all twos at that point of well, color and crush them and well, bale Well, the problem with that is then we got to start storing bags somewhere that we're not crushing. That's what you and, do now. And if the state comes in and finds right. that, that's $1,000 a thousand dollar fine and $1,000 a day, each day we're in violation. So we yeah, have three trailers it. out back right now? Those, uh, I put the cardboard and the number one bales on them. In both, all three trailers? We only got two trailers. Only got two trailers? Okay, I thought that was One's for cardboard, one's for number one. Number twos, we get less of those, so I store those in the back room. Okay, so then we would end up with bales of number two, but what would, would we move those as soon as we got them, or would they go into... You gotta wait till you get like a truckload to go, because... So it's still a storage issue. Even right, but I mean, bailed. we've been storing them that way before, mm -hmm. out back, and just wait until we got enough. Mm -hmm. But now, ones and twos can be shipped at the same time. Okay. So, and how many bales for load? Eight. Um, God, could be more I'm that. thinking like forty or so. Oh, okay. On a. Is it a They come in a flatbed, right? They just load them. No, up they come bed. in a. Uh, they come in a big long trail uh, tra tractor trailer. Yeah. Fifty-two foot, probably. Yeah. Bar. We can fit quite a bit into there. There are companies out there that do facilities assessments. Um, CMA, who is our engineer, I know that they do it. It's we're probably at a point where we should just have them over overall, or or somebody take a look at the facility because right now we're trying to figure out storage solutions. We just don't have the room. We know that the flow isn't working. I mean, we're having this discussion. I think that. I think that that's warranted. I, did, I spoke to somebody at um, an RRA, and they said they haven't been out here in like five years, so they're probably overdue for to take. Oh, we'll be getting a. Uh, they'll be doing an inspection at some point. When I took the uh, refresher course, they told me they're going to start doing inspections all over the place. That's why I'm trying to get us out of you know any violations that we've got. It, but NRA doesn't. Uh, not an RRA. I'm sorry. The uh, the state. Yeah. Solid waste. Yeah. <clears throat> we could look at numerous waste managers would probably come over too. Well, because NRA, they're, they're the ones that we, we celebrate too, but that's what they do too. Mm -hmm. They work with the schools that's to do that. That's their business. Yeah. Have a nice day.
nice little meeting over at the recycling center. All right. I won't. Because if we're going to change things, I'd rather just be there long term. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. And even trying to make the building efficient and stuff like well, that. I think long term, eventually they were talking about, well, when Sean was here, moving that to the pit with a new public works building. Yeah. Years down the road, not 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 anything on the foreseeable. I think future, I just heard the pitchforks being picked up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's why I said years down the road. You know, there, but in the meantime, there. we have to take care of what we have. So I get, yeah. There's yeah. a lot of things up there. The concrete on the floors is cracking. Uh, some of the concrete pads aren't the best shape. Uh, Do we have facility reports from the uh, our committee that went around looking at our buildings? We should have a report on what they. We do. Yeah. Yes, I don't have it with me, but I can get it. Because I'm sure that it's, it's got to be a lengthy uh, list of stuff that they've seen around there. So is it really discussing, I mean, uh, the, the fees and all that stuff until we get an assessment done? Well, I, I think the fees came up as an afterthought. Our biggest thing is our policy that we're going off of. I mean, it has guidance in there that we're charging for stickers. We're obviously not doing that. Yeah. Well, that, so and that then, one is old. So you, the one you emailed is, is the year later. Mm -hmm. The one that we had that you were referencing, it's the same exact RSA number. It's just this one's a year older. The it, doesn't, it doesn't reference the fee. Okay. They changed the fee on the website, I know, about a year and a half ago. Yeah. Because it said on the rules a dollar a sticker, and I was charging that. So the one you emailed out is much more accurate than the one that we had. Okay. Except it still has the swap shot, swap shit in there. Swap shop. And then the, the guidance about the must be in transparent bags right. for the non recyclable trash. Mm -hmm. The one, the 2014, May 5th, 2014. No, no this is, uh, well, yeah, that was an updated policy. Oh, okay. but this is the recycling trash disposal. This one here. May, four, May 5th, 2014 is the adoption date that we're looking for. Well, this was approved on October 25th, 2010. Oh, no, May, I'm sorry, May 5th, 2014. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that's sorry. what I asked, yeah. So, you're looking at 2014? Yep. Correct. All right. <laughs> Still mentions the coveted swap shed. So this document here, our recycling trash policy, disposal policy, we also need to make sure that we're paying attention to our operating plan for Nottingham's Recycling Center and Transfer Station. So this is what's on file with the New Hampshire DES. This is what our state approved permit is based on. Okay. So there's also, the reason why I gave this to you is there's guidance in here about the general operation of the facility. And obviously there's conflicting guidance between this, which is on file with the state, and our actual policy. Just, so this is from 2013. So just the very first thing, the capacity of the facility. <coughs> We're approved to receive 15 tons daily <coughs> store 200 tons are we any i can't imagine we're anywhere near that that's still probably good or have we grown that much that 15 tons is it seems like a lot <laughs> i couldn't imagine we get that in a day i don't think we get that in a day and and then he said those were a uh, thousand pound bales but we did about 40 bales yep yeah, that's only when he's got a full load which yeah. could be Right. Two months, month. We're getting rid of the cans Weeks. weekly. All right. <clears throat> no, I'm just going to look only. You're right. Like you said, we're. You have a water bottle for them? Wayne? Yeah. Okay, I was going to say, I didn't hear a phone. <laughs> you all right, Wayne? You all right? All right? Yeah. Okay. There's a water fountain right there, Wayne, if you need it. Right in yeah, the You need a block.
And should there be, you know, to your point, a fee, but should there be a bigger fee for a commercial person, a person? <coughs> you know, Why are we even allowing commercial people in? Well, they're town residents. Now, generally speaking, you would think if they're hauling enough material, if you were a, a flooring person or a carpenter, maybe you would just have a dumpster at your facility. <coughs> well, that's what it says is required. You, they're not, someplace in here it says that they, they're not supposed to be coming in here to dump their business. Okay, Sorry. which yeah, one are you referring Trash and recycled items from a commercial enterprise will only be considered for acceptance on a case-by-case -case after written request for a recycling supervisor and the town administrator. So I feel like that is probably not being held up that much. <coughs> you can always charge the uh, contractor a little bit more, too. But it says that they're, I mean, are we can... Uh, we got a feel and I haven't been explicitly told to turn them away yet. I mean, we can't What's your it. feeling? Huh? How do you feel? Uh, I think we could uh, charge them a little bit more money. You know, if they're using the facility more than the normal person. Right. Oh, absolutely. Right. If but is like it a filling carpet. the dumpster up so it's costing us? Pardon me? Are they using it so much that it's filling it up quicker? It's contributing. And are we charging them enough to make up for that? Uh, I charge them the appropriate fees when I see it. Maybe they're not appropriate enough. Well, we could change it if they're contractors. They come in there with. Mm -hmm. oh. Thank you. The uh, is the straight clean wood. Is that do we still pay to get rid of that, or do we get a fee because it might be burnable? Like, do we get a money back for clean wood? I don't know about that. Okay. Helen, is that in that? Do we get money for clean wood in that? I think it's... Are we separating them? There is generally a wood bin that might be like pallets, stuff like that. And then there's a construction debris, which is everything else, which sometimes... Pressure trees, uh, all the composite nasty boards. Stuff. Yeah, composites. I was scanning through the invoices and I don't see any designation between the two okay. but maybe it doesn't get hauled out that often either every other week for the clean wood just about bulky waste uh, we get rid of usually two dumpsters every week demolition can be a week to two weeks Think demo we dump every week. Our demo we dump every week. Uh, can be a week, sometimes two weeks. Okay. <clears throat> Depending on the amount of people who come in. Uh, for a little while in the spring, I believe it was every week. Spring is a tough time. Everybody's doing yeah. clean ups. Yep. We should level out a little bit. So for the most part, we're doing every couple of weeks. Uh, yeah. Uh, With the exception of bulky waste, which. Yeah, usually that's two do. a week. There's a lot of that comes in. Right. Think we could sort out the metal a little bit better? What's that? Do you think we could sort out the precious metals out of the metal dumpster, like the aluminum, any copper? If we, we had store separate, that someplace. If we had separate dumpsters, we could. For people to put it in, but uh, from with the, where the people are allowed to pick now. Yeah, I know. I have stopped a couple of scrappers up there. Guy had like 30 pounds of copper pipe. I told him he had to put it back. <laughs> he wasn't very pleased with that, but there is still a sign up there that says absolutely no scrapping. <coughs> well, I think if we had the precious metals, Why? the copper and the Aluminum that we could put someplace, maybe we could okay. offset some of the tickets. Yeah. Not gonna offset a lot. Yeah. Yep. Another <clears> thing wrong. <throat> reason to start. Right. If we had, if we had, they weren't supposed to do small dumps. Scrap it. In, they were allowed to go in like 
bring those up they can, once they get filled. Pieces of wood out because they need wood for home. They're able to go and take this. Like we're not opening up the electronic bin saying, hey, go take all the components out of the TV and bring back the TV. No, they're not putting the tires in that spot. Uh, we put that stuff the there. The warrant article should What's be reviewed that? then. What are we doing where we put the, the tires? assumption that they can go in all the Where the, the tires were piled? Mm. That's where the box went. Oh, you put the box in. Yeah, I figured it would best just keep it there. Any friends anyway. That's not confuse people too much and it's out of the way. Fair enough. I think there was a, a meant that, like, if you find a lawnmower in there that you think you could use or something like that, it was supposed to be like one, you go in and strip the bin clean of copper that you weren't using yourself. But, but we didn't put a limit on it. I thought it said not for profit, though. There's still a sign up there that says no scrapping of the facility. Which is scrapping. I think the people were allowed to get stuff, but if you're right. pulling it and taking it for sale, I think that. But how do you know? I mean, how do you just, you know. Right. Proper radiator, uh, it's all bent to hell. You're not going to be reusing that for anything. I get that, but I get the whole purpose have to of this the... warrant article that came up to do dumpster diving is basically what I call it. Okay, uh -huh. it's because we've had a problem in the past with people dumpster diving. Uh -huh. But when it was pitched, this warrant article was pitched at town meeting, the participants who were pitching the article were using the, not the term scrapping, were using the term of, well, I found some <laughs> wiring that I, or mesh, because I could go around for my chicken coop I was making. And I found an extra piece of scrap metal roofing that somebody threw away, and I could use that to make a doghouse, those two pieces to make my doghouse. The presentation to the town was that this was for people to go and take items out that they could use at their house or use Especially in order to go the, buy. At that time, the swap shed was no longer being used. That was the, the way the article was presented to the town. But was it presented right, also that it was costing us money to tip the metal dumpster. So by picking it, so to say, it was reducing our cost because now we're both but we're junk getting metal. paid for the metal. Yeah. Certain metals we get paid for. We get paid for probably all metals. Probably. Steel but steel. I, I sat there. Those were items that I recall being said for what people were looking for because they could re purpose that around their house for some project that they were doing that, that is the yes i go. think you weren't you were supposed to repurpose it for dollars correct <laughs> it was for something else <laughs> article is not worded that, that way no, but right. no of course it's not worded that way so the presentation is different from absolutely now we're left to interpret when you're trying to sell something to the town you put it in the way you want the people to hear it you don't and put it do the other way that? you can't police it Unenforceable. And again, as we talk about all these problems and all these little issues, it all comes down to something that we keep talking about. Money. Right? That's why we're complaining about the guy taking all the copper. He's taking money away. If we're going to allow all the ways to go here, I don't care who says it. There's no way you can't, there's no way, why, there's no reason in my mind why we shouldn't be having a fee. Because we're going to be on the losing end every time. And we already are. We're behind the ball. Yep. So I think that's why it makes sense to have somebody come in and take a look at the operations and see, number one, if we're doing, not doing things quite right or if there's improvements we can make to make more revenue or if there's things that we're not doing quite right. How do we improve what right. we're doing? How do we come from the first in the nation to last in the nation in 50 years. I think the fee makes sense. We'll just have to never, figure out. We never a, increased with the time. We stayed it was 50 years ago. And then who would do the fee if we did it? Would it be, be when, you do the, when you do the registering again with yeah, the vehicle? Just the way it was before when you paid the dollar. And then they could do it at the facility if they haven't gotten Absolutely. it. Sure. But if it matches the, I think the, I mean, even if you started at like Epping, 20 bucks or something like that, and then. Well, I was thinking, you know, I said this before, I don't know if you were here when I said this, you know, again, I was thinking 50, but if you went 25 or whatever, but we could also do an exception too for the people that are 65 or older 
that are retired on fixed incomes, maybe they wouldn't be subject to the fee. All right, it's a way of helping out people. Yeah. Right. Hard, hardship claim. You know, I mean, just because you, you know, and I understand sitting on the budget and sitting on these you know committees over the years where it's always come up as something where you know the people that are on fixed budgets are being affected by the cost of rise of your taxes the cost of rise of this this those are the people being affected so if we were to charge a fee of like fifty dollars maybe we make the 65 or older generator part exempt yeah. so let's get back on track a little bit thank you okay. Steve. yeah sorry but okay operating plan filed with the des when is that due to be renewed Oh, we passed I, I think we I think we just need to make sure that we're still following it so I think that's probably the most important thing we can do I mean one tonight of the, one of the things that I noticed on page two days and hours of operation open the public Thursday Friday and Saturday between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. The above referenced hours may be revised upon the discretion of the town of Nottingham. However, the hours must stay within 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. Yeah, we're in violation of that because we stay up to 7 o'clock in the summer. Correct. So we can simply just change that. That isn't mandated by the DES, well, I, is it? But it's no, but it goes on file with DES. So right. because this is a policy change, we had CMA. If anything, we would just have to cut this. Thursday back to... Yeah, but why? If we can simply make that change in this yes, document. Change it to 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. or whatever. Yeah. Right. Does that cost us every time we file this? I can't imagine. Okay. I'd rather it's keep with it the state. I figured it cost. Oh, I know. Somebody, I've dealt with this state. If we have somebody else produce the document, it's going to these? cost us. But. Now, that 7, 7 o'clock thing on Thursday, last two hours are usually a little slow. We don't get a whole lot of custom in that time. Do you feel any benefit of it for getting stuff done for the next day? Not well, really. I think well. like nine to five, three days wouldn't be a you know bad thing. I know we left it later. Just people were later coming in. I mean, I think I, it would be a good discussion for when you get to the point of having a public hearing. Yeah. Being able to get the input. <clears throat> I think because generally speaking, people didn't want to stay later on Saturday, but at five o'clock on Saturday is pretty much like Black Friday at Walmart. Like everybody is coming yeah. in and it is, it's busy. Yeah, we get hammered. Right. <coughs> I don't, but then, you know, you guys trying to clean up after, you know, maybe the extra hours need to be at a, a different time. I mean, well, we do. I know too. I always feel like Sunday I want to be there because it's like I'm working Saturday getting everything ready and then on Sunday I want to do that run to the dump if you've been cleaning something up and now you're like everything's ready I'll try to remember you on Thursday or if uh, we sits there in a pile we try and pick up slack on the Mondays when we come in yeah we do four hours on Mondays and we try and catch up then so maybe ex moving the extended hours to a busy time and it wouldn't be ben, such a rush at five. What is it? Uh, State your name. <laughs> uh, Stephen Jarrell, what is the document, the DES document you're talking about? It's actually a Town of Nottingham document that is filed with New oh, Hampshire filed. DES. Okay. It's the operating plan for the recycling center and transfer okay. station. Okay, thank you. <laughs> And then currently, um, I mean, if it's the posted time it says it closes at five, but the gate gets closed earlier than that, right? Yes, I can contest to that. <laughs> so it's not closed, but they won't let you in. <clears throat> yeah, we close at quarter of so we can button everything up and get everybody out. So personal feelings. No offense. We say we're open to five. God dang it, we ought to be open to five. And pay you guys the extra whatever time it takes to close it down. But it does say on the sign. I know, know I know. But it's tough when 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 you post at every place that the recycle center is open nine to five. 
Then you get there, it's like, oh, uh, but we're not going to let you in after 4.45. So why don't we change the hours to 4.30? Either way. I just have a problem when you say... You're still going to run the same problem. Yes. Where it's closing at 4.30. But they uh, know that they're working until 5. But I think it's getting the people out. Well, right. If you're not letting people in at 4.30, then you get the people that you're getting out still clean up and get home. I mean, it's Saturday at 5 o'clock. I've worked many Saturdays of my years, and you know what? Saturday at five o'clock, I want to go home. <laughs> it's the weekend. You want to go and do stuff that you, I mean, it is what it is, but again. I'd I mean, I would prefer like Friday, Saturday, Sunday over Thursday. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like I think a lot of people do, and I work rotating shift work. So there's times where I don't make it to the recycling center for a couple of weeks just because I can't make that time. The seven o'clock day does happen to work out if I have to stay over because I, I get in. So I think the public hearing portion, whatever would work and what we're able to, I know we, we truncated down to three days and we left Sunday open and another day open because people that were working at the facility at the time, they weren't getting enough hours at the facility and they wanted to take on another job as well. So I think we were working lows at Sunday or something like that. So they were doing something different and that's where they, requested it the who we had working there at the time but it would also stink to kill their weekend well you're also going to find it harder to find employees correct especially since you're not it's not a 40 hour week job yeah i guess somebody who's willing to work right now uh, we we we're not, we're not going there we, that's a different discussion yeah so all right operating plan anything glaring besides the hours you mean the one with the state yeah right. that's the only one that matters technically and then we need to make the other one fit this one so i just looked at uh epping and northwoods and they're open on sundays new market not but northwood which is right next door and then epping on the other side they're both open on sundays So I saw something in here in regards to uh, minimum manning um, to have safely run the operations up there. How many people, how many bodies do you need to safely, in your opinion, Wayne, do you need to run it safely? On, I, I'd say at least four. four? That that everything's covered. What, what's, what are the titles of the for things that are being covered like well we're basically floaters something we see something needs to be done we jump on it everybody does everything but you're running a what three right now two during the week on uh thursday and friday so at a minimum you can effectively do it with two not very well we, not very uh, well but it can be done now are you scaling back like you're not bailing or anything like that there's some things that are suffering up there that we can't attend to when we don't have the manpower. Okay. I mean, if we had the manpower, we could catch up on a lot of things. What I'm getting at, Wayne, is to safely run the facility, I'm looking at a number of which we'll, we'll need to run it. Otherwise, you shut it down for the day. That's what I'm looking at. All right. Uh, during the week, we can run it in with two. Two. But we ran it with two on... Saturday one day and we got slaughtered. All right, so you need a minimum what three on Saturday a, a bare minimum You'd bare like to have minimum, four. Yeah, and that and if we have That then I I can actually take time off if I'm sick If we have enough people to run the place I have not been able to A couple weeks ago. I was sick as hell and I wasn't able to take time off. I had to be up there I couldn't leave Well, I appreciate your dedication to your job uh, but okay, so that we we have our answers there. So part of that there will have to be changed. Mm -hmm. Well, that yeah, and that's in the, that was a separate t that was the town policy, right? What? But that's the one that described no operating of equipment. Mm -hmm. There's only one person there. I don't think it can be done with one person. Minimum two. <laughs> I think so. Sounds like that was a reaction to an issue that happened. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> yeah. So it looks as in this we have to deal with the hours of operation, get rid of reusable goods, reference in the swap shop, seeing that doesn't exist. Not that we don't want it to exist, but. Then if it needs to close, if like for inclement weather and stuff like that, do you usually consult with the town administrator or who makes that decision? Well, I, if we had problems like the power going out, I would usually let Sean know. Uh, usually, they, somebody would let me know if we if if we couldn't run because of the cold or something like that. Yeah. Or we shut down due to excess heat. Yes, that too. Is there an outside hose on the front side of the building where people park the cars? I believe there is. Because you know there is a line five point five dust control, and it is just one big dirt. You know, on dry days, it gets. I'm just, well, I'm just saying, if we're, if we're going to go over these items and start looking at things, I mean, if there, if, I'm pretty sure there is. If there isn't, it wouldn't be hard to plumb one in. Right. Again, so obviously you've never used one since you don't know if it's there or not. Yeah, but if there's not, right. I can I'm, put one in. I'm just, but I'm just, I'm going. We're going over the, the state things. Cool. So. It's not your fault. There's not one there, but it's just something that says yeah. part of these regulations says, you know, another question you ask, is there a mice problem in the place? Uh, I don't see mice. Well, then there you go. Good. That's I don't nice. see evidence Vectors. of them. What? Vectors. <laughs> Vectors. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, we're going over. I'm just trying to ask questions about what I'm reading here just to make sure that, I don't know. I mean, it says dust control, maintaining vegetation on natural areas and additional to pavement or gravel and traveled areas should be affected with limited wind-blown dust. dust. Should dust become a problem, graveled areas will be watered. So I'm just asking the question because it's there. Yeah. Not that I find it to be a, a huge like issue, but you know, you went through the drought last year where we didn't get rain for weeks, the thing becomes a dust bowl over there. Yeah. You know? So you're in a drought and you've got somebody out there watering the... Well, so you have the garden hose out there to sweat water. I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> in the old days, you pour oil on the ground, but that's not acceptable anymore. And you said <laughs> there is a well and there is a leach field and a septic tank? Or a septic tank. I don't believe there's a leach field. Right, probably not. Okay. So that gets pumped out frequently, too. I remember you saying it's by the electronics there in the corner. There's a tank. <clears throat> And that probably doesn't get pumped often. There's probably not even once a year. Month and a half. That much? I believe so. Uh, it's it a full gallon tank. Ones, does it? Okay. How big of a tank is it? Yeah. Don't know. <laughs> Never looked does at it. I get mine uh, pumped once a year. At my rolling house. sewer that does it? Yes. Uh, he'll know. He'll know. I'm sure he charges us yeah. by the. Yeah, by the time he shows up, not by what he's pumping. <laughs> That's number the gallons. Yeah, with the rain we've had, we get a lot of erosion up there too. Some big crevices. Like up past the dumpsters, there's, there's some big, you know, big washouts. What around the? Uh... Yeah, up past uh, the, up past the last uh, the construction dumpster, we get a couple of. I mean, we can kind of maintain that and keep it somewhat under control but it's going to just keep happening so you need a load of fill in pardon me you need a load of fill brought up yeah well, and possibly something to stop it because i mean we we got dirt up there we just keep we throw it in and it, mm -hmm. a couple weeks later we throw more in when's the last time it was graded well you know you can't grade this area this is around with the truck with the yolk rake which is not a big piece of equipment pardon me even the truck with the yolk rake you can't He's talking about basically on top of the, the oh, you're septic the tank. You can't, yeah. can't get in there with the, the, no? Not on top of the septic tank. It probably washes down those concrete um, yeah, barriers okay. yeah. into the dump, is what he's saying. The top part's filling up and rushing down, which eventually with a full facility walk down, like Tim was mentioning, I, 
I would think one of the improvements would be paving that top area, at least then you could maybe <coughs> put parking spots, which would help the flow and then keep people from blocking people into the back. And if it's paved, it doesn't become a mud pit, <coughs> which kind of improves everybody's safety, just walking <coughs> around, material handling. Is that a historic road, though? <laughs> so, so I do think one thing we should add oh. in there is the who should be consulted to close the... Okay. That was right out of the middle. <laughs> It'd probably be about the poor concrete. <coughs> no, the salt will just break it up. <coughs> yeah, I mean, pavement is relatively it's cheaper, malleable, and sometimes we have a paving company in here who's got asphalt left that's got a. Yeah, some lines would help people to park out there. Yeah. <coughs> uh, another, another issue I've had. Uh, Kids running around up there, out of the outside of the vehicles. Sometimes the parents don't really monitor them. That's a little bit dangerous. We can't tell people not to bring their kids to the dump. Yeah, sometimes uh, that's the only way. They, they <laughs> need to, I mean, it. They got to you know control them somehow. It, it takes nothing for you know if a kid zips out there and somebody's coming through. I understand it, but I'm probably also at fault for that because I've brought my kids there since we've moved here. And so it's always, I'll go help throw things into the dumpster. It wasn't so darn fun there. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? You didn't make it so darn fun there, Wayne. And, you know, uh, the well, I, I actually had a couple of kids. I caught them over in the uh, electronics bin. They're probably about 8 and 10 years old, hucking rocks in there, you know, not being monitored. Their excuse was, it's already broken. Oh, can't lie. <laughs> hey, bro, that <laughs> is true. <laughs> yeah, but it makes a mess. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. <laughs> so, I mean, I I think one of the things we who says our education system is bad in Nottingham? <laughs> <laughs> <It's just laughs> At least they're not doing it when it's closed. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I think updated signage that's just consistent, like color and brighter, and so like when you need to close the bulky Big letters. I did kick somebody out of the bulky waste dumpster for you a couple weeks ago. You had the signs up and they were putting yeah. stuff in. I said, unless you want him to come out and yell at you, you might want to put it in the air. Uh, <laughs> the empty one that doesn't have the cones in front of it, buddy. <laughs> Who would you talk to? The guy with the cowboy hat? No. No? No. <laughs> uh, does he ever take that off? I don't think he does. I could say I've never seen him without it. <laughs> he likes to be called cowboy. Yeah, he likes Doc Holiday. Drivers two way through the gate. Well, there's a couple of things in the operating plan that needs to be changed. Obviously, we just went through those. Yeah. Do we need to go in more detail about what needs to be changed? Where we talked about the hours of operations, uh, the fact that the reusable goods are stored under cover in the swap shop. That whole line item needs to be taken out mm -hmm. because that is no longer. Is there a figure one? Uh, three three talks about the traffic pattern and it says C figure one for the traffic plan. I see a figure one. I think there is a figure one. I didn't copy it in your packets. That's fine. I just it references those. It's pretty well marked. I understand where you're going, but if the thing is telling somebody to review figure one. Mm -hmm. and just making sure that there's still a figure one. <clears throat> we'll figure. Yep. And we got first aid kits up there. Yep, we just recently got one in. Okay. Got an eye wash station, uh, okay. spill kits. Okay. Is there an AED up there? A what? AED. Defibrillator? Yeah. A what? The defibrillator. Yeah, we got one. Oh, good. good. I always wonder if that would jump start a car. Might. Let's say we not try that. Not a big enough battery. Those I, eight and ten year olds you saw out there gonna try that in about four or five years. <laughs> Have you know how long you been there now, Wayne? Three years? Uh two, 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 a little over two. How have you noticed these past two years? And again, this is just a inquiry on the the amount of people recycling their oil. Is it going down or is it still staying pretty steady? It's pretty steady. Okay. I mean, I've been collecting empty 50-gallon drums just for the for the summer, so we have a place to put it. 
No, so we, I want to make sure we're covered. Are we still burning it? Yes. Okay. Well, we're still waiting on a part on the furnace, so we can burn it again. And they're also supposed to clean the whole system. He said it looks like it's never been cleaned. Who's doing that? Uh, Bidet. With the Clarence? Person. Yeah. Have we used them for anything else in this town for cleaning? Bodet. He's been putting yes. in all the new boilers and everything. Okay, so he wasn't cleaning the fire department. Yeah. Oh, okay. No. no. Just, what? Well, I'm just asking. No, no, no. You, you, you. Legit question. Make sure the guy's the... The one that we want to be cleaning and not the wrong candidate. <clears throat> Do we have a figure? Oh, well, that's another subject, but now we're storing. Is there any requirements for storing that oil? They're still Store. bringing it in their containers. They're five gallon. But gallon. now we're kind of holding on to it to use throughout the winter, and now we're transferring it in the means that it wasn't originally. Like, uh, if we got it inside undercover. And it says used oil on it, with, you know, we're okay. Is on there anything? Drum. We talked about tons of dry materials, but is there any type of liquid storage? Like now you're talking sprinklers. This is so the fire thing, loading type of thing. With used oil, it probably needs to be on top of a spill containment. Nope, only if it's outside. Oh, okay. Uh, and I keep it in the corner of the back where it's probably not, not that we shouldn't because we probably should. What's that? I said we probably should anyways. Yeah. So if the barrel springs a leak, it's yeah. I, I've got it up on. Uh, I put it up on pallets for that it's reason. In a containment. Uh, we don't inside. We don't need any big containment. If it was outside, we need something. I believe it's ten percent bigger than the container we're storing. Then we need to look at five eight. No quantities of liquids are stored on site. We have a fuel bowser there right <coughs> outside the building. We have a diesel fuel. Yep. So that's a quantity of stored liquid. But that's inside of a uh, containment concrete. But this says we're not storing anything. The thing that we sent to the state says that we are, no quantities of liquid are stored on site and the site is the entire facility. But is that interpreted as heating? Because you can't. Yeah, it's about it spill management. Like, I mean, maybe heating or not, but this, I would question if that's the right term. We just need to. worth looking at and updating it. <clears throat> I'm not sure in, in turn, like if we just got to say there's a, I don't know how many gallons of diesel fuel is outside. Is that used for heating and for the vehicle? Oh. Yes, for the vehicle. Uh, it can be used for heating in an emergency. If okay. we run out of waste oil. Okay. Do you just truck it into like a f container and bring it inside or is it w lined? Yeah, we put it in a, you know, like a couple 50 gallon drums. Okay. And then we bring it with a fork truck in then we, tra we transfer it to the tank. And is that diesel, dyed diesel, off-road diesel for just a thing or can you fill up this new, uh, the 2012 truck that is up there uh, now. I know Sean used that as a backup fuel supply for the town. So I'm assuming it's road diesel. It's not heating oil. Okay. Hmm. <clears throat> because that load, uh, the bobcat we got that has to have the low sulfur diesel in it. Okay. Um, yeah, I would just be curious what what they mean by no quantities of liquid is probably at least some heating stuff, but then we may want to put like additional waste oil may be kept on site, limiting it to however many gallons we determine. At least that's going to be kind of tracked in here. How many 55 gallons do you, drums do you have up there, Wayne? Uh, that are full, I think I like one or two. Then we have five 250 gallon drums inside. And by the end of summer, those will be full. How many? Five, what? 250 50. gallons? No, 50. 50. Okay, 50. 50. They're probably 275 Two. class. Well, 275, 250. Is what they're classified as, but. Yeah, yeah but I'm sure that dump in the, the well insulated that it is probably pisses through that. Yeah. Without a bra. Yeah. So on spill management, if we just crossed off that first sentence, it would make sense. 
Well, I think the, to Matt's point. Spills uh, on site will be dealt with using section, appropriate cleanup methods. Well, section 2.1 just says we're, we're not permitted to receive uh, explosive waste, contained gaseous waste, liquid waste, infectious waste. Is this considered liquid waste? Well, is it considered waste since it's yeah. a product that we're right. using for heating? Right. It's right. not might be considered waste. Yeah. The fact that we're reusing it's not at the end of the day, like at my work, if once it's left its designed container and made its way through, it has become waste oil. It doesn't mean it doesn't have a function left in life. It's just waste oil. It's no, it's no longer specifically what came out of that container. It's not motor oil anymore. And it's not specified under the authorized waste that's very clearly listed out. Yeah. And it, uh, the big thing for that, though, is just like like fire loading management like that. You know, we're saying, oh, we have some plastic stored, which that's no ignition source, but 1,500 gallons of fuel is now an ignition source. And you may need to have sprinkler. I don't know if the building has sprinkler systems. <laughs> but uh, what, I figured we'd probably, probably be frozen outside now. <laughs> <laughs> what did the state do? We're we're okay to have that there, as long as that's you know, okay. marked as waste oil for recycling. Uh, like and so said, then again, maybe that's just we got to get this just off. clarified. Clarified what we're holding there. Which they are, but I don't know where you're oil. saying uh, where those containers are. I'm not curious. The Primax would have to say uh, some of them are. are. Some <laughs> the new ones aren't. No. Like it's <laughs> stencils and some spray paint. I can take care of that. Looking. Yeah. I wasn't sure if you heard me, but uh, I'd be curious to know what Primax would have to say about all the waste oil being stored up there. I checked with the state after I took the course to make sure we were uh, me. in a, you know, we're in accordance with their their what they do, and we are. Okay. So I called the head of. Uh, I don't know, whoever runs the courses up there in Concord, and I spoke to her. Uh, I can't think of her name right now, but. Sarah Albert. Yes. I wanted to make sure that we were up to code with that, and we are. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think Primex just offered or is offering a um, safety course on transfer stations. I'll look into that. I, I would think that that would be a topic that would be covered. Okay. I know that we cover that ad nauseum at work, like just where things need to be held, and then things are in like fireproof cabinets and all of this stuff. And it's just mm -hmm. like here, we're just got oil sitting around everywhere. And we're like, we're not storing anything on site. And like 1,500 gallons is a lot, to, or 750 gallons is a lot more than nothing. <laughs> Thing is, the flammability is pretty low, so you're fine with it. Yeah, but once it's if it was gasoline, <coughs> it would be a whole separate issue. Have to be in a fire cabinet. Fuel oil, kerosene, mm -hmm. not required. Waste oil, definitely not required. Not very volatile. You'll need a gauge in those tanks. Yep, got gauges. So you can see when it's yep getting close to the top, so you're not waiting until it yep. spills out the top. Yeah. And when we do take it, I try and get in the uh, kind of clearish one gallon jugs with the threaded tops. We try and collect those and reuse them for oil. Yeah. I mean, some people sneak in regular oil jugs, so we can't really see what's in it, but we'll try our best. So what do you do with those? If you can't see what's in it, you're not going to run the risk of dumping it into a larger tank, are you? Yeah, you dump it into the five, the, five, the gallon one you can see, right? Yeah. So, okay. If it comes green, you say it's not very yeah. good. <laughs> but then how do you dispose of it? That <laughs> we, we call the people run into that, it off. Yeah. Well, they're supposed <laughs> to put their names on them. They're supposed to. They don't always. Okay, people are breaking the rules all the way around. I put your name on it. Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> exactly. Man, John Moore dumps a lot of oil. <laughs> Look at this guy. He's <laughs> running his own garage. But it does, I mean, generally save us probably. I say the building is drafty, obviously, but it's we're just using up used 
fuel that we were going to have. Well, it use. was a way of basically called recycling. Yes, and saving us money. And I, you know, obviously, if we can try to tighten the building up or whatever, we're going to do it a little bit. We did actually add insulation. We did insulate and, and put stuff, a vapor but... barrier in when we replaced the furnace. Okay. We band aid the, uh, the building. Huh? Band aids work. <clears throat> so it'll say with the recycling policy back to that one pager or two pager. So it does say that styrofoam can go into the compactor. <coughs> I think yeah, we try not to. I mean, people, you put a big piece of styrofoam in there, it takes up a lot of space. No, yeah, I totally It goes into the landfill, it never deteriorates. I try and keep that into bulky waste. Yeah, so that's something that should be updated there. It's the third bullet. Yeah, the, these two items cover the, we were just putting these back in, people could reuse stuff, but this one, Recycling Center for the purpose of redemption or sale is scrapping, and I think we just said they could reuse materials, kind of getting back to that bullet. Mm -hmm. Well, if you let them go Good. out, you could uh, just say the uh, metal dumpster is off limits, and the rest of them, they can you know, dig in if they want. We can't. We can't. Now, the, the one article passed as proposed, and that's to reduce the amount of waste the town must pay to dispose of and to enable the reuse of salvageable materials. Shall we direct the Board of Selectmen to allow town residents to pick and take reusable materials and objects at their own risk from the recycling center dumpsters? So I don't think you can exclude anything from that. Or how much they can take. Correct. But we're saying, oh, uh, we can't tell what somebody's reusing or what they're not, you know, if they're taking all our copper. We if a guy comes in and takes a truckload of copper, what are you going to say you're reusing it for? Again, I, well, I think it's obvious, but what can we, are we, based on that Warren article, I would say we can't. That says for their reuse, not for their selling. So if you. And we do have the sign that says so no So the guy can say, well, I'm going to reuse it. I'm going to melt it down. That's why my personal feeling <laughs> was we should have a separate space for that. And now it's not. But it doesn't matter. This is untouchable. But then you come. We to don't the... have untouchable. <laughs> but it also says to lower the cost. That's not lower. You know, people pulling stuff out of there isn't lower the town's cost. The and we're already shorthanded with staff. It might require a warrant article. Yes, we can re-submit a warrant article. Oh, to no, in their rule, no scrapping. On the books. Well, that's what we're saying. But the, they overruled the, that. the Warren article. They overruled passed. the no scrapping. Well, it, it, the way it's worded. <coughs> you, you just read the Warren article. Yeah. And that was what year? Uh, that was 2021. Yeah. Oh, yes. Two. Two. Wow. <laughs> that again. 22, February 15th. Yeah, I was going to say, we one just did that. <laughs> that one, I remember that one. But what year is it? The. Uh, it was sold differently at the meeting. I think you yeah. could get into an interpretive thing like somebody would they really want to push it if they're just trying to reuse something like they would have to want to fight the town through the Warren article process like there is some enforcement based on the words they would have to since they can reuse material they're allowed to pick and whatever we're also allowing them to go into our containers which is at they their had, own risk. I don't they allow had them to, to go inside. They had I loan them my hook if they if they want to get something. Yeah, I think they were. They had to sign a, a waiver before they were allowed to pick too. Do you guys still have waiver forms? We never got them in the first place. Okay. I think we talked about that they were going to need. I don't know. But basically, they were going to make them sign a waiver before they were allowed to start picking them make sure that if they did cut themselves or whatever it was. <clears throat> that probably fell under the amendment that failed that the select board shall adopt policies and procedures to enact the article but that failed Just to have to follow that broad language hmm. but again to your point if you're taking metal that doesn't reduce the town's operating budget. That takes away from our 
Revenue stream. Revenue stream. There's one that makes it a little bit. Are we gonna? Are we actually? Are we now? Since we went over the state one, I don't know what more we can digest on that one. Uh, not much. Are we now going to start talking about the recycling trash disposal policy for the town? We've been loosely talking about it. Well, yeah. Again, we can actually start looking at line items yes. and, and making notes on those and say, hey, you know, because we have in there all bags, non recycled trash <laughs> that's placed in the comptor must be in transparent bags. Well, we already threw that out. I you had a uh, lot of people in town were going with that until. That got changed. Sure. And you know, maybe that, you know, and here, I'm going to just read line, the next line item after that. Recycling center staff may inspect any bag or container as deemed necessary. Now, you know, and I know everybody here that some people are going to say they're being targeted by Wayne or by the cowboy guy or whatever. Now, we have to take a question if we want to keep these policies. Do we let the 40, 50 people that are disapproving with the, the, some of the procedures at the dump? I mean, that's one of the reasons why we took away the, the, the um, as we thought we were helping the clear bags to the blacks, but obviously we weren't, or maybe we're well, not. Well, I haven't heard as many complaints since we've uh, scrapped the uh the clear plastic policy. Yeah, because I've been a little bit loath to uh, enforce the rules because I get complaints when I do. That's a good, that so, was I mean, point. That was the point of changing be... it. To, to make your job easier, that was the point of changing it. And to bring down the complaints. Yes. Yes, but it doesn't say, you know, it's people aren't following the rules still, you know. But again, back to my point, what's it costing us? That's what I want to know. Uh -huh. What the dollar figure is. I mean, there are times I know things of, you know, thing of salsa got moldy and my mom will be down for the weekend and be like, gross, trash, because at her house, everything goes to trash. And then I go and then you throw the bag in and you hear the ba-dong, you're like, oh, mom. It, it just, that's me. But it, at the same time, if you saw it, what do you want me to do? You're going to want me to rip through it's at the bottom, piles of trash to pull out one glass no, jar. No, You're no, jumping in. I'm not, I'm just saying at that no, point. No, but I mean, if I get somebody, for an example, a few weeks ago, a guy comes in, probably had about 40 aluminum cans in his bag, glass bottles, household trash, yeah. and he tried to throw it in, I, and I told him it needs to be separated. That is... Right, and I agree with that. He probably had a, a party or something like that. There was one common oh, trash. Oh, he just but... didn't like to recycle. He was too lazy, he told me. <laughs> that was his excuse. Okay, then that person definitely we would like to. I think it's hard to quantify the yeah. cost. Mm -hmm. This is the person showing up with 12 black bags and no recycling, and then I think at that point, hey, what's in the bags? Right, it's like a peak. But I think if somebody's got six totes of sort of recycling and then they are, like Matt said, loading five bags of trash into the compactor and you hear something or you see something, it's like, well, obviously the person is recycling. Right. Well, there's a lot of people that don't do any recycling at all. It just all goes into the chute. $50 is looking better every single time. <laughs> <laughs> easy, that would. Yeah, easy. <laughs> uh, I mean, maybe you just... In so we're on point three. Yeah. Because now, you could, even if you go down to the next one, anybody observing disposing recycled materials in the trash factor or disposing trash in the trash container meant for recycling may lose the privilege of using the recycling center. The length of time will determine by the nature of the infraction after reviewing the town administrator and recycling staff. So now are we actually going to ban somebody from using our dump for doing what that person just did? If they're a repeat offender, right. but have we have a lot of warning sheets on people and nothing. what happens? Nothing. Exactly. Nothing. It's pretty hard to enforce it. Well, you got to have somebody actually watching for them to come in. And it would have, I mean, again, it's, it's almost impossible. And then if it's for like two weeks, you might remember that it was 
vehicle X and Y for two weeks, and then you know you see the guy in the third week, and my suspension, ended, and then it just ends into hostilities, and and then we have problems, and then it jumps on Facebook, and everybody's complaining, and then just it opens up. Over, I mean, but well, <coughs> there's no repercussions for them breaking the rules. What's no, why are they going to stop breaking them? It's not the right, okay, but it's the fact of enforcing those rules. We can't actually take our police department and say, you know, and call them because we said this guy wasn't supposed to be here, and then we're going to take a cop off the the grounds to come to the recycling center for to kick this one guy out because he was throwing stuff he shouldn't be into the thing. I mean, are we that that level is what we're going for? No, I wouldn't support that. No, I don't. You know, it comes so down I mean, to like what he says the cost. Like, Why even have it? It's a deterrent. It, it's it's obviously working. I mean, we could just let them, let people do whatever they want up there. Let it be the Wild West. <laughs> okay. Well, it feels yeah. that way anyways with uh, Doc no, Holiday wait. up there. <laughs> wait. I never bothered me about the people that were complaining about you uh -huh. for what was going on and their sensitivity, and again, I'm on live camera, and I'll say it out loud, but their sensitivity because you weren't allowing them to do whatever they wanted to do, and that pissed them off. Yep. And I mean, but this so is way, but I expected to get that response from people knowing that if you, when you tell anybody they can't do something and they feel it's their right to do it, uh -huh. there is going to be some sort of, of clash that conflict. happens. Okay. The conflict. It goes a little deeper than that, John. It's the approach and how a lot of these complaints came about. Sure, of course. Okay. But again, I mean, you know, you got to maintain a level of professionalism when you're dealing with the general public. He represents or the organization. Yeah, but don't they, they have to represent it back to him? You know, and show him the level of respect for what he's doing. But if you look at most of the complaints against me, most um, I would say we're not talking. We don't want to get into personnel because no, no. that's not where we're going with this. I'm just, it's more over the interpretation of what these rules are, is what we're trying to, is, is what I'm trying to basically, you know, look at. How we interpret what's here on this piece of paper. Having the line item there gives us somebody like who grossly does something, we can try the enforcement, you know, obviously on slower days, it's easier to enforce or nitpick down further than on the busy days when we can't even catch the the blatant ones, you know, like. A couple Saturdays ago, somebody threw away uh, three recliners without being caught. Yeah. Well, a lot of that has to do with lack, lack of uh, personnel up there. You know, okay. As we already spoke, you said ideally you could, you'd like to have four people there on a Saturday. Yep. So if you had four people, well, we would probably catch someone like that. But at the current state that's going on right now, where there's limited uh, personnel up there, we got to do the best what we can do. Right. You're not going to catch everybody, Wayne, and I'm sorry. Oh, I know I'm not going to, but I try to do the best I can. You can't be everywhere. So, what, so. Are we what are we proposing for language change to, I guess, item three? Are we just going to say bagged, non-recyclable trash, place in the compactor? Are we going to mirror? Preferably in transfer. Is preferably. Even like the white bags, I feel like the normal generic white so bags. So not transparent, are, but like an opaque. Or I mean, that's what I, the opaque ones you can kind of see, but you're never going to see, I've seen that, yeah. It's like nitpicking down to the. So if somebody has a black trash bag, you're going to say no? We're not going to say no. We're no, going to say. We want to make sure that's clear. That's we're just going to say that it's preferred to be. Right. Okay. And then it says recyclable material shall not be placed in this container. So you're putting the. Okay. Do we want to take the styrofoam out of that? Yeah. Yes. So just remove that line. Some items such as poly. Polyesterine foam. Is that yeah. what it is? Must be in the loose state. Just I already crossed it out. So. Good. Yeah. Bulky waste. Bullet four is fine. Still give them the ability to inspect, try to. But what happens at that point? 
They may inspect any bags or containers as deemed necessary. I agree. Generally speaking, he's either going to get through to somebody who might be like, all right, and if they're pretty bad, I mean, we're going to, at certain points... Re-educate? I guess. You know, just, hey, can you please try to separate that out? Can we do that? I mean, I, I don't know. He, he's not the police. And tying up our police to do this, I just waste of resources. Right. For at the end of the day, it ends up being... I mean, how many cans make a pound for 45 cents? Like, it's just not worth physical Pennies. confrontation, which is going to cost us hundreds of thousands of dollars. But it's, we can't say we're not going to run a dump. We have to just try to have rules. And then if somebody is hard, blatant, six hard bags of trash that you can see, we can try to take the information down and, you know, give warnings. I don't know what it can do. I'm... I don't know what what enforcement we really have. I've never seen what other towns have for real enforcement. Are they going to find them for littering? Not putting trash where it's supposed to go? <clears throat> I mean, it might not be a fine for littering, but you could maybe have some sort of penalty. Illegal dumping or... But then, what's he going to just say? I'm not paying. I don't have cash. They're going to get in their car. Like, again... It, the, the line of the good people and the there's the medium the middle people will probably bend or at least be like you got me all right fine i'll try to separate the shit out the other people are gonna wait until you're doing something and they're gonna throw it <laughs> they're gonna be like not looking Whoo! and you're gonna hear it hammer down the chute and then they're gonna just bust off or it's gonna be down the chute and now it's like god what was it This was my point, like, even with the transparent bags. It's like, okay, you can see it, but telling somebody, some wife who's showing up, dig that thing out of that trash bag is just not where we want to be. No. No. So we just have to try to make the rest of the recycling center as easy to use as possible. And I think, to, again, I, I think <clears throat> consistent signage, same font, same color scheme for all of the bins or something at the compact if it says very large lettering highlighted. Right, just a Garbage simple... only, no recycled materials. Again, yeah. All the signage I think is consistent throughout the whole building and outside the building. I think that helps. You know, we could also even put the signage of guilt. You know what I mean by the signage of guilt is the fact that you see people that says there, please encourage recycling in Nottingham. Please take care <coughs> of your community. You know, having things right like there to make people self-conscious about doing the wrong thing and about doing the right <coughs> thing. You know, when you put it out there and say, don't you want to take care of your community? This is why we recycle. But you have that reminder up there. So when the people are breaking the rule, and again, it's not going to cost us any difference than putting up any other sign that says anything else that we're going to put up. Yeah. But, you know, I mean... If it comes to the fact that it is a way to get people to do something is by guilting them into it. We all been there. Somebody's guilty us all to doing something we don't At want the to bottom do. you just say like <coughs> every ton of trash costs this many and like you could put some note. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's just right there. Every ton of trash costs you so many dollars and like shit, oh. every every time I'm doing this it's gonna cost me on my taxes. <laughs> I mean again, I'm just saying that that's something too to consider on signage. You know, something like that, just yeah. to give people maybe the, the sense of doing the right thing. Yeah. You know, pride. Because it, it gets tough even inside. I've seen people, especially, you know, I don't want to say visually impaired or elderly or whatever, but sometimes, like, the numbers are hard and they're in there. And, like, is that a one? Is that a two? Is that a seven? I mean, there was milk trucks we got that apparently turned out to be sevens. And it was right. just... So then it's hard when you're in there because now you're throwing all the stuff. I tr my kids have thankfully just kind of put everything in recycling and I deal with it when I get there but um, you know like the open but containers and stuff everything's yeah. changed over the last couple of years but when you leave town and him thanks you for recycling have a good day mm -hmm. right let's let's make the dump a more positive atmosphere mm -hmm. well technically it's supposed to be a recycling center dump is kind of a okay, dirty sorry, word I used the wrong word right okay <laughs> thank you for recycling <laughs> town and him. right we'll make sure we put the wording correctly before we put it on a board but Right. I'm just using the term. You know, I'm just trying to think outside of the box of stuff that we haven't been doing for all these years and what we maybe can do 
to I'm not trying to make the experience of going to the dump some people are going to be like thank god it's Saturday I get to go but at least a pride you know you're going in there you're doing the right thing this is the why you're recycling it's good for the town it's good for the taxes it's good for this yeah and I mean I don't even think there's in. anywhere on the building that tells you it's the oldest continuously operating recycling center John, there's a little like news the article echo about the positive I recently went to the recycling center Came, and two citizens of the town volunteered and helped me. So in other words, there are many things that we don't we take for granted that go on very positively at the recycling center. Right, but again, just thank you. But I mean that's something too. If we're going to start talking about what we're going to do about the place with procedures policies, I mean we got to again uh, saying getting the. The company in to just do a quick overview of whatever, you know. But then we also remember, guys, we also have to think about how much this is going to cost. Right. We can't say, well, great, we got a great plan, and the plan costs forty thousand dollars. Because guess what? We don't have forty grand. All right. So we got to take that in consideration. Whatever the plan comes back of how we warrant the best way to spend the amount that we have and to get the biggest effect. I think definitely a use fee would help tamper that. I, I think that's now where that dollar amount comes out to. Oh, yeah. With uh -huh. some studies, I think. I mean, it will. It'll it'll reduce what the the operating budget of the facility is. I mean, how do we get rid of that three hundred thousand? Right. Or at least, how do we start it keeping that three hundred? How does it break even? How do we keep that three hundred thousand maintaining it doesn't instead have of being four hundred next year? I mean, even it's kind of like a basic. It's It's near impossible. To, to, you know. It's one of those Everything goes up every year, but the town is growing too. I know, but so we, we can't. I, I think we can't run a recycling a center. Is unrealistic. No, but we can't keep a recycling center running the way it was thirty years ago when our town has increased by fifty percent. Right. The building hasn't changed. I mean, we changed our, the, the, how we locate the the big dumpsters around there. That's basically the only change we've ever done. Right. And We're still employing the same amount of staff. But the facility you know, the walk through would definitely because I mean the fact that you stop and then there's it hasn't had an issue yet but everybody has to walk in front of moving cars with their trash we've talked about the young kids running around and stuff too like getting the facility laid out properly will ensure that everybody is safe move effectively get the stuff in and out and you know if you spruce it up a little bit and it, it generally if things look nice people take care of things when they look nice when things look dumpier not because it is the recycling center people tend to care less you know i've seen some people pick when you know you're bringing out your cardboard and one blows away some people look around like eh. and then i've seen some people go out of their way to pick that up and move it up i mean you go along dumpster row and you get down by that paper one the way that we're doing paper now there's a mound of paper back there now it's just stacking up and piling up and that looks horrible it just looks more trashy at that point right and it's you got to try to m improve the experience <laughs> <clears throat> yeah and that how deep are we going to get into this tonight well so i think i think the best next step to be honest would be to have either it would probably be NRA or CMA, one of the two, have a walkthrough with them to go through what we're currently doing. I'll do some preliminary because, I mean, to see we could, what we could probably apply for grants. If we're the this. oldest recycling center in the country, why wouldn't here? NRA want to give us a grant? Keep it keep okay. running. The official word is the oldest continuous recycling center. I'm sorry, Steve. The oldest there continuous. Were many in Philadelphia in 17 or something, whatever. That was a recycling center. But we were all the oldest continuous. But we were also the first to mandate recycling. Right. I'd like to know when we said there are meeting. grants. There are grants available through New Hampshire, the beautiful. I mean that's I've learned is that's how we've acquired to. the work truck. Um, that's obviously where we can get some new signage, recycling specific signage. We have a points program with them, so. 
woods and use it. A new building. But when they go through to do their study, if they're going to go through, I'd like to, you know, if somebody was there. So that, you know. Well, when the assessment. Yeah. That you were just talking about. Yeah. Maybe one. I mean, I'll take the day. If oh I, no, I, I, no, that's what I'm saying. I'd love to be there. To I'd like to be there to see what they have and ask questions. Of yeah. course, Wayne would be. Yeah, but you know, just so that we're not hearing it all second yeah. hearsay or what it was, and we get a better interpretation Absolutely. of what this. Since this is a big subject, I think that needs to be addressed. You know, for what it's going to cost and where it's going for the town and how we're growing. Yeah. Because just so you know, there's a new, another new subdivision going in that's being proposed on Wednesday for 25 more houses. Mm -hmm. Now it's in the preconceptive way on the planning, but again, twenty-five more. No, but two hundred and thirty, three hundred thousand on a line item. It's a big number. It's a big it's a part number. of the town. It needs to be, you know, when the fire station outgrew and we finally like, <coughs> they had to move. I mean, it, it's a process. I'm not yeah. saying we have to move it, but there's definitely got to be some improvements to it. Thank. You. But we're not making are we making like are you going to be operating plan you're just going to put some draft stuff in mm -hmm. and then we'll look at it but we'll have to wait for an overall okay uh wayne just one question i have for you obviously you're very familiar with the fees yep and what the cost are mm -hmm. Do you see anything on this page of money-wise that you feel should be addressed by us right now of saying that it's inaccurate or should be increased? Because you know the amount of volume that would be coming in saying, listen. Yeah, if we increase, the people are going to well, I'm saying going to be rumbled. Right, but we're not increasing. But, you know, like could say for household furniture and things, couches and love seat. I know. You know. Is that something that could go to $25 instead of $20 But because you're seeing enough of those items come in? Yeah. where it warrants the the fact of coming up a little bit more or is do you feel the right thing that box for you know full fifteen dollars or queen i mean i'm just asking these questions where you know a propane tank 10 pounds and up is only five dollars is should that be a ten dollar <coughs> fee for one of those i mean it costs 50 bucks not to buy one or get one at the what do we i know Exchange. well again i mean that's what people do yeah. right they just take the old yeah, thing off and throw it on there people do it's expired and just don't but i'm just saying is that i mean how many propane tanks do you dispose of in your life is that something we can get ten dollars for i mean we're not Would asking we people to go but devalve no uh, no no it doesn't say there but we should probably put the line that must be empty at least like epping says must be empty yeah, but there's always, I mean, you have to take the screw on the side in order to piss it and make it really yeah. empty, empty. And most, most homeowners aren't going to feel comfortable taking the screw off the side and watching that, you know, half gallon in there. No, that's true, because that's, that's because a it's hazard. That's a hazard. Right. We'll play how much, on fire. Do you know how much it costs us to do the, uh, the Freon? No, I have no idea. Because, yeah, uh. I mean, if we had the staff, that we could keep that in house. We could have a reclaimer. I've dealt with that stuff before in the in past. Why would we want to reclaim the Freon instead of paying somebody else to do it? Not right. just a thought on saving some money. Uh, I have no idea. When they recycle the uh, uh, refrigerators, the, the scrap places won't take it if there's Freon in it. So they uh, we pay a company to come in, yeah. take care of it, and then we can scrap it. Well, they'll apparently. take it still, but they won't give well, you money for the uh, product. Right. They resell it. Yeah. Learn something new. Yeah. But I I don't feel comfortable. You know, you guys have a lot to do up there as it is. Adding that one more thing to do, uh -huh. I think, is, you know, especially with the amount of personnel you have up there. Uh -huh. I don't think that's feasible to add that in there at this particular point. My opinion. I mean, I'm sure the you know no i i agree i mean it, the facility just thinking though the facilities walk down will be key for like that like throwing them in the corner through the winter and trying to get them out of the way and move snow around it and i think he was mentioning he could crush them more effectively if he had a pad or something I'm just thinking out loud like things that we're going to have to address that have become issues because you get appliances with and they're just kind of sitting at odd spots um the layout so I think that a walkthrough with somebody else who has some 
dealt with thousands of these, we'll definitely. How often does that one. company come in? Um, usually wait till we get like 40 or 50 pieces out there. Yeah. And it usually takes a little while before they get there, and they, they leave a nice mess smashing them up. And then we clean them up, crush them, throw them in the uh, metal dumpster. So like once a quarter? Something, something like that. And how are you crushing them up? Once we get them, well, when we had the uh, backhoe, we'd crush them with the, uh, they had the clamshell bucket. Now we got to crush them once we get them to the dumpster. And sometimes it takes a little while to get rid of them because if the dumpster is full, we can only get rid of so many at a time. If we had a concrete pad we could crush them on, we'd probably do it more, you know, a lot better, a lot easier. And the concrete pad, if we had a big enough one, that's, that would also be good for the furniture. When we crush that up before we put it into the dumpsters. Well, I was wondering if it would be better to, instead of using that concrete containment for the tires, move that box someplace else and now you've got a concrete pad. Oh, yeah, that might possibly work. Just food for thought. I don't know where, I'm not sure where the best place, place it would be. I know. Because we probably had to put a concrete pad underneath that too. So I'm not sure that. So the baler. Yeah. Let's get back to that. Back to that. Full circle. Well, are we, are we, I mean, because we're going to have to discuss it at our next um, POS meeting as to whether or not we want. I'd suggest the larger size. Right. We should so get we, a quote for a large. Yeah, large so size. we get all the same size bales. Mm -hmm. yeah. How much is that quote right there? I don't have that in front of me. Do I have that in front of me? 16. 16? Yeah. I thought it was 14. Well, that's well, just for the baler. You got to go to page then. two. <laughs> It was, yeah, it, there's a... Uh, 16.4, say 16.5. And then... Five. And were we going to have to use ARPA for that? That was the thought, because we don't have the money in the budget I, for it. Again, I just wondered, I'm just, since we're televised, I'm just mm -hmm. trying to bring up subjects, even though I already know the answer, I just wanted to... <laughs> so, Wayne, which one really on that, that for people that I gave you would be the same? None of them, because they don't have a bigger one on there. They just got bigger motors. I can't, I can't see it. I don't got glasses on me. Uh, no, the baler size are there. Look yeah. right here. Back here, it, it has the, down here you can read the bale size. It's probably the oh, six okay. item down. What size bale do we run right now? Um, I believe the cardboard we take is 28 by 52, maximum size. What about the plastic? Uh, one of the plastics is the same size and the other one's very similar, but the older one, that's pretty beat, the older baler. They were surprised we were still using it when they came in and maintained them. Actually asked me if you, he says you're still using that. I said, yeah, he couldn't believe it. What balers do we have? We have two balers that are running right now. No, we have three. We have three? Great. Or the one that's the cardboard one right there. We have the one in the back right there. Is there two back on the back wall? Uh, there's one in the back, the side room. Uh, where where we the keep, loop oh, where the loop. oil used to be over. Yeah. Oh, the uh, <coughs> bailing one. Yeah. The bailing cardboard. We got cardboard uh, number one, oh, and <laughs> and I'm doing bales of uh, number two colored and cleared together, so we don't, you know, we're not storing that stuff up overhead and it drips down, makes a mess onto the floor. So we're already and bailing it, plastic. Yep. So what would be the advantage of another plastic bale? We can separate the twos from colored and clear, and we lose money when we have mixed bales. We get more for the clear. So I mean, you the want two the clear. two separate oh. bales, one for one, one for three. Right. Okay. But we have three bales already. One's being used for cardboard, one's being used for number one clear, and the other one's being used for number two. And so, okay. what, then, what we were doing before is we take the colored number two and we toss it upstairs in bags until we bailed a but you know, until we got a bale of clear, then we bail that up and we go back to doing clear and collecting the color again, which So what he's doing instead of storing it as he fills up the bags in the main room, they're taking them in, dumping them, 
they compact it a little bit until it gets to bale size. Before, they would separate it out and they would leave a bunch of bags of colored maybe sitting upstairs yeah. until they had enough to run it through the baler. So, you got so it's one not really that we need a new baler. I think we need more storage. Uh, no, we'd get in trouble for that sto storing that stuff. But if you store it squished or store it not squished, what's the difference? They don't like bags of stuff. The state does not like bags of stuff laying around because it's dripping down. I mean, if it was in like a trailer out back, if we bought another trailer, trailers. I they probably still wouldn't like that because. But if it's cru but if it's crushed. No, it's not crushed. It's no, 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 no. I'm saying if it was crushed, cheaper to get a trailer. Oh, in the baler, sitting in the baler, crushed. Right. That's okay. Yes. And well, you've got three balers up there. We're not talking about cans here. No. Right. Because the can. The, the machine that went down was the can one. Right. But when we talked about the efficiency of it. The ones that the can crusher would produce, the can baler, would be too heavy for us to move, except for throwing it into one of the highway dump trucks. And then we would be making highway dump truck runs with like three or four bales, however many we can put into a dump truck and then load. So then it comes down to he every right now, every Monday, he just runs a trailer up, dumps it out. We're getting paid continuously, slowly. But we're not paying ten thousand, twelve thousand, fifteen thousand dollars for a baler for cans, and then you would need to get somebody else out there. That now the guy that's there on Saturday has, I believe, the correct. I don't. Could, who can drive the dump truck? I think the guy that comes on Saturday can drive the dump truck because he's on the highway department. No, if that's if we don't get nobody on the highway department. Oh, okay. No, no, on Saturdays. Helping. We have two. Okay. We're on our own. So our. Nobody's even classic. We would have to have the. Uh... So we kind of now basically are putting ourselves in a situation where if we're going to recycle cans, it has to go into a trailer, mm -hmm. a cage. Mm -hmm. There is no oh. other option for us right now. Not necessarily. A bale is a bale. No matter what you put in it. Right? I have well, no what idea. What you have to the cardboard bale out, you can fill it with cans and no bale, bale of cans. Then what do we do with the cardboard? I know, I'm just saying, a bale is a bale. Yes. If we had another one, like the two we had, you know, we, we could do all the plastics right. and the cardboard. I think we'll find the aluminum, doing the aluminum the way we do it now. Yeah, the machine don't care what you put in it. Yeah. I guess I'm not seeing that you need another bale when we already There's have three, three types of plastic. So the well, point the is... Twos. But the well, point is, you have to separate color and clear. Yes, yeah, it's clear and color. There's number one and there's so you, two, so number two. As you're taking, you're throwing them right into the compactor. You're not storing them. Say if you had all three. Right. There's no storage. There's no drippage coming down from the ceiling. I don't know how there's not drippage. And no know. chance of being fined by the state for having bags of grossness up there. So you'd have one, number no, one. I, I get that aspect, but I think I it comes down to a storage issue. I mean, if we just had a... Dumpster? I don't even know. And then we it's not in bags, it's in a dumpster, and then you take it from the dumpster and bail it when a dumpster's full. I don't know. I think we're going to have to see how other people do this. Cause it, assessment. What? Needs assessment. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's sorry, a ton saying. of money. A needs assessment. A need, yeah. Still how many? Needs. I mean, you don't want to spend money on another bail. We can just keep doing mixed bails and losing money. Yeah, but the question is how much more money are we going to make? After it cost us eighteen thousand dollars for a pair, twenty five thousand get the big baler. I don't know. We if we're could, only we, gonna if we're only gonna make ten dollars on each bail need, by separating them, we could, just, we could just be, keep doing mixed bales and not bother with another baler. Which I think, yeah, we we just need more data of where this is gonna put right. us. We need to know what the money is. It always comes down to that. It does, yeah. as it should. <coughs> All right, any more discussion or anything in regards to uh, bailers, policies? Well, are we asking them? Are we asking for a proposal for a larger bailer? I think we need to get assessment. a number. We, I, we can ex I can get a number for conversation's sake. Right. Don't, we can extrapolate up anything. or down from the bailer, like whatever. If the bailer's bigger, we would make more money. But a base ton value separated, mixed, would at least we could have a different discussion right yeah. also the bailer that we use for the number twos is ancient right now like as i said they were surprised right. it's still in use oh i see that's so, the I mean, one if that one, if that one dies there we at least have a backup bailer that we could do you know mixed bales in again 
And that's the one on the side room by the... Yeah, the kind of tan one. The By the waste oil. Yes. Down the way. And if we do get a number, not saying that we're going to get a number anytime, but if we do get a number for what it costs us, you know, for that particular bale, remember we still have to minus out the tipping cost of the truck that's getting rid of it for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that seems to take a lot of our profit right out the window. Yeah. Um, just on how we do paper now, I, mm -hmm. for a while they were talking about like they could, they used to handle paper differently, not the cardboard, but the paper. And then I know for a while there the trailers were for storing paper so that we could try to get the best market price. Maybe it was for plastic or whatever. Are we losing money when we, like is paper, do we get any costs on that, that dumpster or is it just a straight cost to we us? We get a little bit of money for it, I think. But is it just low because my, it's just wet, gross? It was my interpretation when Mr. Sterndale was here is that there was no market for newspaper. Or any paper, of that. Or paper in general. That was a few yeah. years ago. When mm -hmm. they, that was a few years ago when they had said that. I, but I don't think it's changed. Right. Recycling uh, hasn't gotten better. Would that be mixed fibers? Yes. Probably. So yes. $45 a ton. Is it's what we pay or what all. we earn? That's what we're being paid. So it's changed. Okay. We're making money on it? Yes. Good. Uh, $45 a ton, Steve. That's a well, that's lot the, of paper. That's a ton of paper. Well, that's, that's, <laughs> that's different than the old days where you had to pay for it. You know what a ton of paper looks like? So, and then I know that we've been trying to kick out, there's a signage that they do not want the beer, soda, mm -hmm. non-corrugated in there. Is yep. that still? As far as I know, it's got... I was told I was told by the state it's got aluminum and plastic impregnated into the paper to make so it that stronger. Goes where? Trash. Trash. Yeah, non recyclable at that point. Does it affect us if it goes into the mixed fiber? If they catch it it probably would be considered contaminated. Right. Okay. It's um so that was the forty five dollars was back toward the beginning of the year. It now looks like we're being charged for it. Yeah. So it, it's it's an ebb and tide. So it should just go in the trash, probably. Then that's going to fill up the trash compactor. Yeah, that that is they're all, charging us anyway. But it depends on what they're charging us. We ain't going to win on any problem. situation, start, no matter what. But if you start putting it into the trash dump, we're going to start. It's going to be jamming up for the end of the week. Yeah, is it, I just want. Hmm. Sounds like we'll only be recycling metal. Dollars and Two cents. cents. That's what's going to come down to. Yeah. Yeah, I don't even know. Like, does glass do anything, or is that a cost now? So I, no I will correct that they're charging us between twenty-five and forty-five dollars a ton. We are not receiving money for a paper. I didn't okay. think you get paid for glass either anymore. No. We're not getting money for glass. We are not for paper. For paper. paper. What about yeah. glass? I had said earlier that we were getting money for right. it. We're not. We're being charged for it twenty-five to forty-five dollars a ton. What's glass? We're not getting anything for either. No, glass we're paying for as well. Yeah. I, everything's changed so much in the last couple of years. Plastics are down. Everything's down. Yes. And what's our per tonnage for the... For the glass? No, for the just the dumpster that goes to waste management. Two, that was 215 Two fifteen. Two fifteen. dollars a ton. But that was... That was in 19, that, like, so you've got to add 3% inflation for each year since. So it definitely makes sense to separate that out because it's half the cost to get rid of that paper that way. If we just threw it all in the straight dumpster right. to simplify, it would just cost us. Yeah, but how much is that? How much, how much crap can we stick in that dumpster? <laughs> is that, is that when, it, when they leave, is that, is that a 20-ton, a 10-ton a ton dumpster? I don't know. What, what, what's the weight of that thing packed? The, the compactor one? Yeah. I don't know. And because that's what we're getting charged on, right? Yes. You but if you look at the... Ton, tonnage. I mean, every time they haul it, they're going to hit you. They're going to hit you. $75 or whatever. And when it goes across the scale, though. Sure. Right, right? exactly. Glass and paper are comparable. Yeah, nothing. Yeah. But by separating them out of the big one, we still reduce cheaper. the cost. Well, we, I, I, less negative is the same as a positive sometimes. <laughs> well, I don't know, because the figure she said right there, is, that doesn't include the 
the truck that's coming to pick it up and take it away. That's just what we're not making any money on. So when the guy comes with the truck and takes it away, all the glass and the paper or whatever that goes, it's we got to setting the res the revenue that we are receiving for uh, the, the town guys the actually take care of the glass. So they bring it to whatever facility. Yeah, but we're paying them and the gas for the truck. And yeah, I mean, are you using one of the dump trucks to haul it, or what, how are they disposing it? I think they load up a dump truck and they bring it to wherever. But then it takes the time to take the, yeah, the yeah. big um, payloader from all the way from the dump, bring it all the way across town. Mm. It's probably still cheaper than paying somebody else. Though. Well, I can, but it's still, I mean, I guess if you want to say that's cost effective, but it's. Again, that all be covered under the review. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we're definitely going to need a. It's going to be shocking. Might be. A better spreadsheet, almost. I don't yeah. even know how to break all that down. Well, I'm happy at least we, we, we opened the conversation about it. I've been waiting for this for a while, so. <laughs> <laughs> Took the Band-Aid off, and it was not what we expected. <laughs> Surgery is now needed. Yes. <laughs> Bandaging, um, uh, well, as of right now, I yeah, will say yes. I'm a no. Yeah, well, we have at least three. Steve? I'll make it. Yeah. Well, I'm supposed to be at a party, but I'll make it. I mean, we're supposed to be having friends over for the weekend because it's right, Friday um, weekend. Then so. I'll just let's just make a command decision. We'll post, let's say no. Postpone it. Can, can you even do it later in the week, or does it have to be Monday? We could do it later in the week. If you want to do it, at least to give us a one, a first, and a third. You want to do it on Wednesday or Thursday? I am supposed to be back on the 5th, which is Wednesday, Wednesday. but that's, I, it'd probably be back late. I could make Wednesday, the 6th Thursday? if you needed, but. <clears throat> Thursday better? Hey, you got to talk to Ellen, too. She, she's able to make a, I think I'm able to make um, the 7th, but probably the 6th would be tough, depending on the time. Not that you need me. You can still make a quorum. No, I mean, <laughs> I'm asking everybody. Who wants you? Not just you, man. I'm asking everybody. Either of those, fifth or six works for me. I'm fine. I'm fine. Six. Thursday? Six? Sure. Six. Thursday the sixth. Oh, you saying the fifth at six o'clock? <sighs> no. Six <laughs> at. We're going to do seven or 630? I'm on vacation all that week, so it doesn't matter. I don't care. Why not? 6 30. I was hoping not to have any of you on vacation. Vacation? You get vacation? Yeah, it's my first one in like a long time. I don't want anything. Stay home. See what happens. I'm just kidding. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you, Wayne. Personal opinion if you're sick, you should stay home. I can't leave the place short-handed. Well, you should call in and... Yeah. I, I mean, we'll... I, I we should I deal with that. shut the place down for a day or... That's the one down. Which RSA do we need to do? Uh, um, cell phone? No, you can see the knife. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, that's... 91. guys walking out with guns. Sorry, you don't have the cheese. No, I don't. I have a knife. <laughs> no, but that was one of them. No, I know. I'd like to make a motion to move to non-public under 91A3, Roman numeral 2A. I'll second. All right, motion made by Tim Debrio, seconded by Matt Sherlin. Roll call all in favor. Aye, Steve Welch. Aye, Matt Sherlin. Aye, John Warren. Aye, Ben Barlett. Aye, Tim Debrio. Okay, we will now be entering in non-public. Thanks for coming, guys. Thank you, Nigel. Yeah.